Enforcers have left the friendly confines of Soldier Field to venture to the Liberty Bowl, where tonight the Chicago Enforcers meet the Memphis Maniacs in a must-win for both teams here in the XFL. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Ross, and thank you very much for being with us here on NBC, here in the Liberty Bowl. And it is certainly a pleasure to, to welcome to the broadcast booth the greatest middle linebacker to ever play pro football, for my money, Dick Buckus. And Dick, certainly a must-win situation for both these teams here tonight. Well, you're right, uh, J.R. Memphis at 2-3, and three, they're only one game out. And Chicago, even though they've got four losses, they're only, if they can win tonight, they'll be right back into it. Ladies and gentlemen, certainly our standings here in the XFL uh, bear what we're saying as far as a must-win situation here. In, in the Eastern Division, Chicago at 1-4, and four, only uh, one game behind Birmingham, fighting for one of two places in the East in the playoffs. And looking in the West, as far as Memphis is concerned, they're looking for their first home victory here tonight. But Memphis is only one game behind three teams in the West. Now, looking at the action this weekend, certainly down in Orlando, a huge game with Las Vegas visiting the undefeated Rage. Uh, and tomorrow, New York travels to San Francisco, and the extreme will go to Alabama to take on the Birmingham Bolts. And, Dick, this ball game tonight with a new quarterback for Chicago, a kid out of Notre Dame, the XFFL player of the, of the week last week as Chicago makes their way onto the field. This game for Chicago offensively really rests on the arm and leg of Kevin McDougal. Well, you're, you're right, Jr. Last week he was 17 for 22 passes for 169 yards. What was really impressing, he had 280 yard scoring drives. And if they uh, I have any chance tonight, they've got to do that tonight. And uh, McDougal, the XFL Player of the Week uh, last week for his efforts. And uh, the, another man that we're going to be looking at a lot tonight is number 20, John Avery. John Avery is the starting running back for Chicago, one of the most exciting players in the XFL. Well, the second leading uh, rusher in the league behind uh, Salam, but he's he's dangerous anytime he gets the ball. And, and talking to Coach Meyer, they're going to try to get him the ball either on short passes and, of course, the runs. He's a very exciting player and, and a tough little guy. Nick, the teams uh, this week, Memphis and Chicago, orchestrated a trade. Chicago received Craig Wheelahan, a quarterback, and Memphis starting tonight for them will be Ike Davis, number 69, in the offensive line. Well, it's kind of unusual. You trade a quarterback for a lineman, but I think because Isaac Davis is such a big guy and the offensive line of the Maniacs are all big, Huge. and what they do is open up some nice holes for Salam. So uh, I think that was what the reason of the trade. Ike Davis will be starting tonight, number 69, a 320-pounder out of Arkansas. And he'll be blocking for a man that is no stranger to our fans in Chicago. He wears number 31 from Memphis, former Heisman Trophy winner from Colorado, and number one draft pick of the Bears, Rashawn Salam. Right. He's, uh, he's had a heck of a year so far. You know, he, he's the number one draft choice. He had some knee problems. It looks like he's healed that uh, knee problem, and he's, he's running like crazy because he is the number one rusher. And uh, quarterbacking Memphis tonight, a big, strong young man from Virginia Tech, Jim Druckenmiller, 6'5", about 240 pounds. I don't want to be a broken record, but, you know, another number one draft choice who can throw the ball 70 yards. Now, what we got to see is if he can throw the intermediate passes for completion. Tough kid, too. Memphis uh, about to take the field here momentarily, ladies and gentlemen, here in the Liberty Bowl. And again, because of the short season, uh, it is a, a situation where both these teams still have the opportunity to get in the playoffs. Here comes the Maniacs now. Just under 20,000 fans expected here tonight on a beautiful night in Memphis. Great night for football, Dick. Well, uh, they can't uh, complain about the weather tonight. It's a nice night. And uh, it's too bad, but uh, Memphis hasn't won at home, so this is going to be a big game for them. Absolutely. The starting quarterback tonight again for Chicago is Kevin McDougal out of Notre Dame. He's standing by with our own Jonathan Coachman. Well, Kevin McDougal, last week you got thrown into the fire. Huge win in your first start, but this is your first big road test. Any butterfly? Uh, not really. You know, I, just, I have a lot of good teammates here. Uh, they have a lot of talent, so I'm just going to get the ball to the receivers and let them do their thing. Now, there's a guy on the other sideline, Shante Carver. He's already put out two quarterbacks this year in only five weeks. What do you think about facing him tonight? Oh, it's going to be tough. Uh, I have all the confidence in my offensive line, and those guys have been playing good all year, so hopefully they can keep him off me. That's always the goal, no doubt about it. Shante Carver will be wearing number 78 for Memphis tonight. Uh, he is an awesome player, and as Coach said, 
Two quarterbacks have gone down at the hands of Shante Carver already this season. Well, Shante has been a real nemesis for all the quarterbacks in this league. And the interesting thing is the game last week, and we'll see it here. Uh, Clement of Vegas, uh, he did not return after that hit. But this one here, this was the big hit of the night. Incidentally, that was a touchdown pass. And I think I'm correct in saying that Jeff Brom is going to be able to play tonight uh, down there in Orlando. Yeah, you know, uh, Clement is also supposed to start down there tonight. Clement's shoulder separated by Shante Carver. The knockout hit by Carver on Brom. And as Dick said, uh, both Carver and Clement will, are scheduled to start tonight uh, in the big ball game down in Orlando. Uh, Shante Carver is now standing by, we understand, with Jonathan Coachman. Well, Shante, you've been arguably the premier defensive player in the league so far. You've knocked out two quarterbacks already. What are your plans for the youngster McDougal tonight? Just going to go out there and play football. You know, that's what I've been doing all year. Uh, defensively, we're trying to get after him up front. You know, I'm just taking it to say, I'm going out there for a battle. It's war, and let's play some football. With McDougal so young, are you going to try to intimidate him verbally early on? That's not part of my game. I just go out there and play. You know, it's no big deal. He's not a quarterback. We got to get pressure on him, and, you know, it's football. Shante Carver, a former number one draft pick. Be wearing number 78 tonight, and uh, Dick, the uh, coin toss has been eliminated here in the XFL. It's uh, a version of a, of a human coin toss. That's it. We're going to have a scramble here. Coach is going to go down and uh, preside over the scramble for the football here. Neither team has had a great deal of success in the scramble this year. Back down to Coach. All right, now it's time for the scramble for the ball. So Memphis, get on your feet. For Chicago, number 21, Troy Saunders. And for Memphis, number 20, Raphael Cooper. Sir, it's all yours. Gentlemen, put your helmets on, please. Right where you're at, down on the three-point, I'll say ready and the whistle. Just one arm's length from me, please. Ready? And there is the scramble. And Memphis, Rafael Cooper, winning the scramble for Memphis. And that's going to give Memphis the opportunity to kick, receive, defend the goal of their choice, or defer, Dick. You know what I'm going to think of? I, I, I've got an idea about that scramble. Let's make it worth more than just the opening kickoff. What do you think of? More money? Not, no, I'm going to run this by you. What if what if the winner of the scramble gets the ball like on the 50-yard line? That's not bad. Now we'll see them guys go after it. Now you're playing cards. <laughs> Kippy Brown certainly has paid his dues in professional football. Offensive coordinator with the uh, Miami Dolphins, where he coached John Avery. He'll be playing for Chicago tonight. Of course, Chicago's coach is the venerable veteran Ron Meyer, who uh, certainly Ride gained fame in coaching at SMU with had Eric Dickerson and Craig James there. Yep. Coach for uh, Indianapolis and uh, New England as well. Wow, that's the most animated I've seen uh, Russ in a while. Ron Meyer. Ron, I mean. Certainly uh, Russ Meyer. I think he was a director of some sort of... Never yeah, mind. Could have been. <laughs> Andy Cross is going to kick off for Chicago. Ron Meyer. Raphael Cooper is back deep to see Ron Meyer. Pretty simple instructions. All right, now you don't have to keep repeating it. All right, I made a mistake. No, he, he just, he's going to... Uh, he just said hit him in the mouth. That's pretty straightforward. Even an old Oklahoman like me can understand that. <laughs> well, this ought to be an interesting game, really. Uh, you got the two leading rushers. It's going to be something. Memphis will get the football first. It'll be Andy Crossman kicking off for Chicago. Crossman out of Miami, Florida. And the ball taken at the six-yard line. And returned to the 25-yard line, Raphael Cooper. Returning the ball to the 25, Chicago's ball, first and 10, at the 25-yard line. Let's go, fellas. Let's go now. Hey. So Jim Druckenmiller, the quarterback, behind a huge offensive line. Druckenmiller has uh, Rashawn Salon, number 31, working behind him. 1050. 680. Blue 80. 
Here comes Salon, number 31. Find that big offensive line. Found some room. First down for Memphis. Running right up the guts. That's their play. I formation. He has that lead blocker. And with a big offensive line, I mean, as a linebacker, it's tough to see Salon. Because these guys are so big in front of him. And he's good at picking a hole, weaving in. But also on defense, we can't have the enforcers missing tackles or arm Mike's tackling. 50, him. Mike's 50. Patrick and Baisley made the last tackle Save first and 10. Chicago or Memphis. Green, 80, 100. Drucker got him back to throw. Got time. Pass intended for number 84. The big tight end, Mark Thomas, out of North Carolina State. Get your head around. Get your head around. Get your head around. See, there's that intermediate pass I was talking about. Uh, Let's go. Mark Thomas, he, he was open. He just Jim threw it behind him. Roosevelt Potts, the pullback for uh, Memphis in most formations. Not in this one, but Potts, huge blocker for Salon. Say blue, blue 80. Blue 80. Salon, right at the guts. And Hubert Thompson makes the tackle. Assisted by Fix. Good job. Way to, way to help me out. Let's go, what, JR? I wonder, I wonder how much information. Who gave the most information? Isaac Davis about the enforcers or Wheelham with the Memphis? You know, in all due respect to the offensive lineman, I got a feeling it might be the quarterback. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Mike's 53. Third down seven for the Maniacs. First drive for the football game here in the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. Motion by the Maniacs. Struck him on her back to throw. There's that short pass. Pass is complete to Keith Crawford. And Crawford tackled by Aaron Humphreys and Kerry Cooks. Humphreys out of Texas. Kerry Cooks out of Iowa. Crawford, the big receiver, the biggest receiver on Memphis, 6'2", 195. Pass 56, 989. Check flat, on one, ready, three. Yeah. Miller, 6 feet, Mike's 4, 50, Mike's 50. 236. Mike's Strong arm, as Dick Buckus alluded to earlier, and there's our first stoppage in play. And the time... Chicago. Timeout, uh, Chicago. Time so the enforcers call the first timeout, and we'll be back momentarily in the Liberty Bowl. I know, but he wasn't really open. We are back live in Memphis here at NBC. Jim Ross and Dick Buckus with you here in the Liberty Bowl. Just getting underway here, and something's got to give here, Dick. Chicago has not won on the road. Memphis has not won at home. Well, you know, those... Uh, Games on the road for Chicago is tough. They were away from home for three weeks in a row. Drucking are looking to throw deep. Got a man. Look at the arm. Completion inside the 10 yard line. Oh, it just seems like it was a matter of time. You're going to let the big one fly. Charles Jordan with a big gain from the big arm of Jim Druckenmiller. Jason Brown on the coverage. Ray 5'9. Did not match up well on that exchange. Big arm by Truck and Miller. Nice play. You know what they did? You see, they, they ran it off that I formation. Play action. And Jordan, who's probably the fastest guy in the field, comes down with the catch. First and goal for Memphis to the eight yard line. Here comes Salon. Salon right up the middle. And hammered by the middle linebacker, Aaron Humphreys, the former Texas Longhorn, makes the stop for Chicago. He doesn't wear number 51, but he is a tough competitor at <laughs> middle linebacker. Well, they got a couple good linebackers over there. 53, uh, Baisley, and, and Humphrey is really coming on. Memphis has had problems in the red zone this season. Let's see if Brook and Miller can lead the Maniacs into the promised land with a second down and goal inside the five. Rashawn Salon, nothing fancy. Salon down near the goal line. No signal. But, uh, he's not down enough. Right, no third down and, down and goal, it looks like. Aaron Humphreys on a, again on the tackle. There's Ron Meyer. Boy, a big offensive line in of Memphis. Averaging well over 300 pounds per man. Let's go. 
What? Let's go. I, you can perk or you can perk. Let's go. I left. Jim Wright. I saw Wright. I'm on. Ready? That play right behind a newly acquired Ike Davis, a 320-pounder, number 69. 6'2", six 6'2". Two, six two. Out of Arkansas. Six. Acquired a trade from Chicago this week. Three. Third down play. Three. So long. Look over the end zone and finds it. Yep. Right behind Ike Davis and Harry both swain. Davis with a drive of 75 yards in four and a half Run minutes. Down. You know, they, they they have their trouble scoring in the, in the fourth period, in the second half, really. But they get this jump. Uh, it's going to be tough for Chicago, so... And here's the all-important point. Now, I say all-important in, in jest, but this one point sometimes comes in handy. No extra points are kicked in the XFL, as our fans know. Ball from the two-yard line. Ruck out play action. And pass is broken up by Jamie Baisley, number 53. So Memphis scores first on the one-yard run by Rashawn Salam, keeping a 75-yard drive. And folks, with a timeout, the U.S. Army presents victories in life. Tonight we look at Las Vegas Outlaws running back Rod Smart, who grew up in the projects and changed his life through education in football. Rod Smart, a great example of the U.S. Army's victories in life. We are back live in the uh, Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. That's a look at Rashawn Salam. Five carries for 21 yards in that first drive and the touchdown. And it's going to be Jeff Hall kicking off deep to receive for Chicago. He is Corey Ivey, number 24, starting DB out of Oklahoma. Ivey feels the ball at the four-yard line. Up to the 23. Where he's brought down. And we'll take another look at the touchdown. Well, see right here, JR, see the right tackle? There's no one across from him. And that's what we call the bubble First side. And plus, you got Roosevelt Potts, the 250 pound fullback leading your way. Big, big offensive line. Right behind uh, the newly acquired Ike Davis, 320. And Harry Boatswain, that fullback, you're kind to him. He was. He's 270, and Kevin McDougal, number 15, starting at quarterback tonight for Chicago. John Avery, play fake to Avery. McDougal looking to throw, looking to go deep. First play, complete. Oh, hey. Big play, but to Junior Lord, Rico Clark on the on the coverage, but Junior Lord. What the, what the heck is going on? His longest pass last week was 23 yards. Pretty good pass protection, throws it up. Unbelievable. Great play by Junior Lore, 6'1", 197, huh. out of Guilford College. And McDougal showing us that he does have a great arm. 54, boy! McDougal, a former starter at Notre Dame. Black 22! Had his first start last week. Avery the eyeback. And... Another pass complete. Again, the quick out to Junior Lord. Corey Sawyer out of Florida State on the coverage. So, well, you know, Memphis's defense got to be thinking, let's put up, you know, almost eight guys in what they called, you know, the famous box to stop the run with Avery. But here, here's the enforcers open up with a long pass, then a short out. Now we see what the heck they're going to do. Second down five for Chicago. Ball at the... Uh, 30-yard line of Memphis. Quick pitch to Avery. Avery doesn't need to go through. Avery at the 10. John Avery at the 5. John Avery, touchdown. There's Chicago. Something. <laughs> John Avery, into the end zone. John Avery is not quick. He is sudden. Well, that's John's, uh, what, number 3, his third uh, rushing touchdown. I tell you what, that guy's, that guy's something. I don't know. He's, he's like a jitterbug. They spread out the defense, you know, and just gave them a toss. And uh, offensive line guys did a pretty good job. John Avery didn't need much room. It'll take a little quick toss. See what I mean? And nice little hole there, but here's here's the oh, skill, yeah. man. Great cutback. A knowing when to cut back. All right. Well, John, John Avery responds, and now the extra point attempt. Chicago stamping the ball at the two-yard line. 
Willie Tate in motion. McDougal got the throw. Got a man. Oh. Well, that all important extra point. See what yeah, I mean? Point is so Chicago now with the successful extra point conversion has uh, gained the lead here on John Avery's 30-yard touchdown run. We'll be right back with Chicago leading by one. We are back live in Memphis where Chicago has just regained the lead. Seven to six, or gained the lead, I should say. Chicago leading uh, the Maniacs here in Memphis, seven to six. Andy Cross, the number four, about to kick off. Raphael Cooper, number 20. Deep to receive, along with uh, number 27, Rico, or Kevin Cobb, number 25. Balls in the end zone's got to be returned. Out. Cooper trying to turn the corner. A whole lot of East and West running for Raphael Cooper. You guys uh, react to adversity. Three plays, not too bad. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, but we've got a long ways to go. Uh, you know, that's a great team over there. So they score pretty quick. So we just got to keep answering them every time they score. A calm, collected young man, a, a golden domer, Dick. Yep. Uh, pretty classy guy. A lot of good character guy. Uh, you know, what you really want in a leader as a quarterback. A big backfield for Memphis is in. Fox, 270-pound fullback. Lined up in front of Rashawn Salon, number 31. Jim Druckenmiller, the quarterback. First and 10, Memphis. Ball at the nine-yard line. Salon. Right at the guts. Being introduced up to number 50 again, Aaron Humphreys. It's all over. You know, when you, when you listen to uh, Duncan Miller, when he gets to the uh, line of scrimmage, you know, he'll call out either 50 or 53, which is strong side. That must be a key for his lineman to let maybe Rashawn know that, uh, you know, he's going to bust it the opposite way of maybe 50. See right here, he yells 50, 50. Second down and eight. Maniacs ball on their own 11 yard line. Play action, Brooklyn Miller looking to throw. The short pass is broken up by Jamie Baisley, number 53. I think somebody got their hand on that. I don't think uh, they have a number one draft choice throwing a pass end over end. Otherwise, we'd be in that Well, speak for yourself. You played the game, I've only watched it. Third down and eight for Jim Brooklyn Miller. 53. Memphis not bad third down converse here. Can they succeed? Pressure on and John goes Druckenmiller. Miller. Larry Fitzpatrick number 99 with a sack. Fitzpatrick out of Illinois State along with Jason Chork number 97. A couple of very active defensive ends for Chicago Dick. Yeah, they do, and even uh, uh, Thompson in the middle, number 91, is having a pretty good year after the first couple of games. Big kid from Michigan State is coming out now, but, I mean, he, uh, he he really hustles. He's a big, strong guy, and guy, kind of guy you want in the middle when you're playing the three-man defensive line. Jeff Hall from Tennessee will kick for Memphis. It's got to go 25 yards, and it does. Chicago feeling the ball, turning the corner. Luke Leverson, the return man, Jackie Kellogg makes the tackle for Memphis. Leverson, a wide receiver out of Minnesota, returned the kick. So Chicago's got great field position here, Dick Buckus. Uh, first and 10, a ball on the 25-yard line. Let's go. Well, I, I would say this is great, you know, 30-yard line. But after the first series, Chicago scores in three plays. I don't, you know, they can, they're starting to move the ball. Kevin McDougal Dougal with John Avery behind him, the lone running back. Three wide receivers to the white right for the Chicago Enforcers, who lead by one. There's Avery, a little stutter step. And Avery, tackled by Richard Hogan's number 54, along with DJ Cooper, number 73. Cooper, a 290 pounder out of Arkansas. Hogan's played here in Memphis. Oh, right here, right here. See, that time the enforcers had three receivers wide to one side, which drags a lot of your defensive backs over. I think their idea is if they can pop it through the line of scrimmage, the DBs are gone. 
and John uh, Avery's got a free free reign to go wherever he wants, but he's got to get through the line first. Avery gain three, brings up second down seven for Chicago, showing motion. I think that's going to be a free play. There's no flag. Leverson, the intended receiver. Coverage on a play by Cornell Menifee. Did it look like you, like the, the right defensive end jumped? Right, right no. It looked like the uh, defensive end was in the zone before the ball was snapped. But looked like it. Apparently not the case. No laundry on the field. Can't complain about that too much. Third down and seven for Chicago. The ball is at the uh, Memphis 21-yard line. And Chicago has struggled this season on third down conversions, worse than the XFL thus far. Leverson in motion. McDougal throwing the ball. Did he catch that? And oh, Bristol's oh. ruling that it, the man is out of bounds. John Williams on the coverage. Wow, you know they. Aaron Bailey, the intended receiver, Dick. And yeah, they, they, they weren't going just for the first down. They were going for the whole ball of wax. Here's another look. And apparently, a Bailey was out coverage. of bounds. Yeah, only got to get one foot in bounds. That's right, but I think his uh, his right foot just crossed over and stepped out. Let's see for sure. Well, well Andy Cross is going to attempt a field goal here. Cross and uh, let me attempted five field goals. He's three of five this season. And the kick is up. It's long enough, and it is good. All right. And Chicago now increases their lead. To 10 to 6 on Crossland's field goal. So Chicago looking for a must win here tonight. Lead by four. John Avery showed that he can not only run the ball, but can block it. I, yeah, I couldn't believe it. I saw that little 20 go in there and throw a little shoulder at somebody. Andy Cross on the field goal. Moments ago, increasing Memphis lead, or Chicago's lead. 10-6 over Memphis. Crossland set to kick off here. Raphael Cooper and Rico Clark are deep to receive for the Memphis Maniacs here in the Liberty Bowl. Nice high kick by Crossland. Taking it to the two-yard line. And the ball is returned up near the 25 to the 26-yard line. And folks, a courtesy of Bush Beer we're going to take you down to Orlando following a Derek Clark fumble. It was Las Vegas ball, the four-yard line. Ryan Clement finding Ben Snell for the four-yard touchdown pass. And uh, Orlando trails at home, Dick, 6-0. Well, yeah, that's that's a first, especially in Orlando. And what's, a, what's really surprising is Clement's back. I don't know if that's as far as he can throw the ball with that bad shoulder, but he's back playing. As are we live here in the Liberty Bowl. Play action by Drucken Miller. Drucken Miller looking to throw. Pass is incomplete. Pass intended for Keith Crawford. The 6'2", 195-pounder out of Howard Payne. And Corey Ivey. Memphis playing tonight without uh, Keith Prentice. Dick, he's their leading receiver. Out for the year, I understand. Really? That, that was a surprise. But they all, they've got some other guys. Now... I don't know if I'm adding correctly, but I think that's about the third intermediate pass, and he's only hit one of three. Drucker Miller with a big gun. Being rushed out of the pocket. Drucker Miller may run. Drucker Miller to the 30. Drucker Miller down to the 36-yard line. And Jamie Baisley, he used to work on the Chicago border trade from Chicago, makes the tackle downfield. Basie's an outstanding uh, linebacker. Well, I tell you, you got a 6'4", 240 quarterback running, man. You, you, you can't bring him down with an arm tackle. First down for the Memphis Maniacs. Ball at their own 35-yard line. And Drucken Miller. And into Rashawn Salam. Bounces outside. Hard hit the 40. And Salam diving forward to the 42. That man, number 50, Aaron Humphreys, along with Ray Austin, number 36, in on the tackle. Austin, third in the XFL in tackles. An outstanding safety for Chicago. Seven-yard gain. Well, they seem to move. 
move all right on first down. It's uh, second and third. Of course, Chicago's had trouble stopping third down, uh, third down plays also, but there's a timeout. So Memphis has called timeout. He's all right. He's second all right. down and, and three, and we'll listen in here. Okay. Yeah, I want Hawk. When I say Hawk, they need to call the personnel out, and I t you tell them in the huddle. I did. Kitts no comes out. Well, Kitts got to be smarter than that. All right. Okay, here it goes. We're going to go right. Deuce Wright, Charlie Wright, stretch right. Okay. We've got Hawk. Yeah, he's right, Charlie, right, stretch, stretch right. And second down and three for the Memphis Maniacs. Football's at their own 42 yard line. Green 80. Green 80. Charles Jordan in motion. Hand off to Rashawn Salah. Got a hold and got a first and 10. Jamie Baisley makes the tackle, but not before. Rashawn Salam, who was nailed. Uh -oh. Yeah, he's getting up kind of slow. And the former number one pick for the Bears, getting up and uh, checking to make sure he's got all of his body parts Rashawn still attached. To the 47 yard line in the Maniacs first down. Green 80. <laughs> Hard hit by Baisley. Out of Indiana, 6'2, 246. First down for Memphis, 47-yard line, play action. Drucker Miller looking to throw deep, has a man, but it's broken up. Troy Saunders, three-year starter at Florida State, covered a lot of ground there, Dick, was able to get yeah, there and break up the play. Actually, actually, Charles Jordan did a good job in busting right. up the, the interception. Strong right, Tubby. Read right, like I said before, shoot. he's the oh, fastest oh, guy on Memphis' team, but Chicago right, had some Reed coverage right, down shoot. there deep. But doesn't he throw a nice ball? That, that one had to be 50 yards. Salam uh, with a ding shoulder there. We'll keep you updated on his, uh, his status. In the meantime, Rafael Cooper, number 20, has replaced Rashawn Salam at running back. Brooklyn Miller looking to throw. Another intermediate pass complete to the 40-yard line of Chicago. Ray Austin with a hard hit. Rashawn Salam got a shoulder problem. Well, we are. First quarter has drawn uh, to a close here with Memphis top running back Rashawn Salam I'm on the sidelines. But right now, the Chicago Enforcers in a must-win situation lead the hometown Memphis team 10 to 6. Jim Ross and Dick Buckus back in Memphis at the Liberty Bowl where the hometown Memphis team trailing by four as we begin play in our second quarter. Memphis football first and 10 on the Chicago 39-yard line. Big Jim Druckenmiller, the quarterback. Druckenmiller looking to throw. Uh-oh. Got the great arm. Complete touchdown. Charles Jordan with a touchdown. 39 yards out. Druckenmiller to Jordan. And Memphis right back in the ball game. Take the lead 12 to 10. Well, what were you saying about uh, Memphis if they're, they miss Prentice? That's uh, I guess Jordan's third touchdown. I mean, just got great speed. Carlos Jordan at a Long Beach Community College just simply outrun the, the Chicago secondary. Just a little basic move to the outside. Everything was kind of open deep. Roy Saunders are out of Florida State. Where they got beat on that play. Miller very happy in that play and rightfully so as uh, the extra point attempt by Rafael Cooper is no good. Rashawn Salam has been taken to the uh, locker room because he has a shoulder blade injury. We'll update you on the leading rusher in the XFL's uh, status as soon as we get it. As you see Ron Meyer was talking to Corey Saunders. Big play by Charles Jordan. Long Beach Community College, Dick. 
not exactly known as a football powerhouse no. Long Beach Community College. No, that's, that was his uh, second receiving touchdown, but you know, he goes across the middle a lot. I mean, just in this game right here, he's been crossing over the middle, and, and it's tough to find tough receivers who will go across the middle because they're afraid they're getting their you-know-what knocked off. But he's got great speed. He has the ability and the toughness to go across, and you'll see him. I, I'll guarantee you, you'll see him on a reverse tonight. So what that tells you, he's a he's a tough receiver, go-to guy. And, and I hate to think if Prentice was healthy, what the, what kind of receiving courts they'd have. Coach, you got an update on Rashawn Salam. Yeah, JR Dick, I'm standing outside the locker room. Just inside the locker room I was with uh, Rashawn Salam. He can't even do the motion with his arm right now. Of course, he's got a uh, an injury to his left shoulder. They don't know if he's going to be back. Of course, we'll let you uh, know on his status. would be a huge blow to Memphis if Rashawn Salam cannot come back. We'll keep you updated. Okay, Coach, thanks. The leading rusher in the XFL on the shelf for the time being for Memphis. And... Uh, the kickoff taken by Corey Ivey and Ivey up to the 33 yard line not a bad return for the former defensive back from the University of Oklahoma so Chicago back in business with Kevin McDougal at the helm first and ten and the ball is going to be spotted at the Chicago 33 yard line it's not a bad field position Dick pardon it's not bad field position for no. Chicago to start it. No, I, I thought early on in the season it seemed like all kickoff people were getting it down to at least the, uh, the goal line. And tonight we've had a fairly short kick. John Avery in the backfield behind Kevin McDougal. Pass on the flat to Avery. Avery's got the ball with space. And Avery knocked out of bounds near midfield by Richard Hogan's and Trey Thomas. Boy, Avery can let's beat go, you in go. so many ways. Well, you, you see what they do? They swing them out, and that's just like, you can just say, well, it's just like a sweep or whatever. What I think Memphis linebackers are going to have to learn to do, boy, we better clamp down on him early. Don't let him to catch the ball like this and then have some ability to speed to go on or give you a juke. you got to get on him quicker. There's not a linebacker in the XFL that can cover John Avery. One-on-one -on -one out of the backfield, I can promise you. First and ten, Chicago. Hand off to Avery. Avery looking for somewhere to go. Squirts through and up to the in uh, Memphis territory, down near the 44-yard line. Rico Clark out of Louisville makes the tackle for Memphis. As I mentioned at the top of the show, you know, Kevin McDougal, he led uh, the enforcers on two long drives, 80 yards and over. That's what you want to do against a team like this. Uh, just keep possession, keep moving the ball, but ultimately score. LaShawn Johnson, number 42, has replaced John Avery in the Chicago backfield. Three wide receivers to the left for the enforcers. And Johnson to the right. What the heck? Johnson, LaShawn Johnson inside the 10-yard line where he's knocked out of bounds by Rico Clark. Three wide receivers to the left for Chicago and the play off the right side behind Tony Ramirez and Brian LaBelle, center Rob Murphy out of Ohio State doing a good job as well. Nice run by a guy that has survived cancer in his lifetime. Yeah, he's Nick. had some uh, health issues and I know he's excited to get back. There again, they had trips to one side, drags a lot of your defensive backs over and he went around the right side. Johnson out of Northern Illinois, three, three, nation's leading rusher his senior year, sixth in the Heisman Trophy balloting. He's a player. And Johnson behind the shoulder pads, and Chicago responds with a touchdown. Shante Carver on the stop. Too little, too late. I tell you what, Avery can beat you in a lot of ways, but we can't discount the contributions of number 42, LaShawn Johnson. No, that's, they've got a... It's probably the best one-two punch in the league, running-wise. I mean, you got Salam and Potts, but, you know, you don't think Potts much as a running back. Uh, mostly he's a blocking back for Salam. So you got two of the best right here. Chicago leading 16-12 to 12 now. 3-22. Getting the extra point from the two-yard line. Willie Tate in motion. Little play action. McDougal's got time. And the pass is blocked. 
knocked down by Richard Hogan's. Yeah, there's a flag here in the end zone. Now let's see what we got here. Penalty. Hogan's got his hand up. The middle linebacker. What is it again? Let's go. Let's go. You got it. Holding. Holding. Number 94. Defense. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat the try. That's Patrick Sapp, the outside linebacker from Memphis, uh, caught holding, defensive holding. Gives uh, Chicago another opportunity, this time from the one-yard line. Charles Wiley, the big pullback out of Georgia Tech in the backfield with uh, LaShawn Johnson, who I expect to carry here. And so, Johnson, successful extra point. So Chicago now leads 17 to 12. LaShawn Johnson with a hard-earned touchdown run as Chicago leads Memphis 17 to 12. We are back live in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm Jim Ross alongside Chicago Bear legend Dick Buckus. Chicago just has regained the lead 17 to 12. And about to kick off to uh, the Memphis Maniacs, Kevin Cobb and Raphael Cooper set to receive Andy Crossland's kick. We'll get an update soon on the condition of Rashawn Salam, the XFL's leading rusher, has left the game with a shoulder injury. John, the coach, will update us on that situation in a few moments. I tell you what, you got to feel good about Rashawn Johnson after all he's been through in his life, Dick, to be able to come back and even play football. Well, let's see, that's... That's what's great about this league. It gives a lot of guys a second chance, uh, whether it be health reasons or whatever. It's and for him, it's a gutsy move. And I think, you know, it's something that a lot of players have a zipper on their chest or they don't have one. And you can't see the desire and the love of the game that they really have. Low kick taken by Roosevelt Potts. And Potts returns the ball to the 37-yard line. Well, Sean, your partner, John Avery, gets a lot of the pub. He's shown that last drive. You got some moves, too. You know, it's a team thing. Uh, you know, me and John work good together, and uh, when he needs a break, you know, I just try to go in the best I can. Congratulations, guys. Also, a quick update on Rashawn Salam. Doctor just told me he has a deep shoulder bruise on his left shoulder. He'll be evaluated at halftime, but he will not be back in the first half. We don't know about the second half. Okay, Coach, thanks very much. Well, wow. That is a blow to the Memphis team. Sure More is. pressure on Jim Druckenmiller, Dick. Yeah, but he's, uh, it seems like he's got things rolling along here. Brooklyn Miller, four of eight tonight. Play action, nice fake. And pass is complete to Charles Jordan. Quincy Coleman pushing Jordan out of bounds. Well, that's, uh, you, you're giving him too much. You know, I know it's play action and all that, but uh, I, I think it's just a respect in the speed, really. Jordan's got the speed. Jordan you know isolated. I mean? see, you don't even see the defender in the shot. Come on. I know the guy's quick, but... Got to clamp on a little better than that. Blue 40. First and ten, Memphis blue 40. ball on the Chicago 49-yard line. And Raphael Cooper, a 5'10", 200-pounder out of Louisville, replacing Rashawn Salam. Tackled by Jamie Baisley as a Cooper running behind the 320-pound Ike Davis. How tall did you say the running back was? 5'10". <laughs> now there it is. See, as a linebacker, you can't see the guy. Salama, you had a better chance. It's a little bigger. 300. You can't see that guy. Second down and five. Five yard game. Cooper again, a ball carrier. Ah. Hammered by Aaron Humphreys after a short game. Come on, Shelly. Trying his left side behind Roundtree and Bernard Williams. Third down, baby. Let's go, baby. Let's go. You know, talking to Ron, uh, Ron Meyer uh, earlier Good today, he's the biggest double surprise. Uh, Aaron Hunt. Right. I mean, he's just uh, unbelievable. He said they just put him in a position, point him where to go, and he'll just knock the hell out of anybody, you know? Humphrey's the second all-time on the University of Texas defensive list for tackles for loss. That covers a lot of good football players playing the Longhorns over the years. Third down play for Drucken Miller. Drucken Miller to Rafael Cooper, the little dump off. 
Oh, that was a surprise play. A screen pass on third and short. Little middle screen, well yeah. executed by Memphis. Raphael Cooper stepping up and replacing Rashawn Salam. Number 20 right in the middle of your screen. He's got a little John Avery. He's got a little wiggle to him, huh? A little wiggle. A little wiggle to the swagger. Hey, a little wiggle to hurt anything. First down for Memphis. Driving. Eight and a half minutes to go in the first half. Rucker Miller looking to throw. Finds his man, number 80, Daryl Hobbs, out of Pacific. So Kimmy Brown's offense working very, very well here. This team looking for touchdowns, not field goals. Yeah, they're, they're, they're running, you know, of course, Salam's not in there, and they're still going from the play action. And Hobbs is uh, is a pretty good receiver also. You know, that, the enforcer's defense is sort of like, you know, bend, bend, but don't break, but they got to be careful of breaking right here. Chicago needs some pressure on the quarterback. Right now, Memphis winning the battle of the line of scrimmage, it would seem. First and 10, Maniacs. Ball to 15, Crook and Miller. Quick out, short gain. Jason Bray tackling Daryl Hobbs. Short gain on the play. I like the way he takes charge of the huddle. He's Gets everybody hopped up. Cooper Miller to Cooper. Cooper looking for somewhere to go. Tukes and ties inside of middle around the five-yard line. Jason Bray on the tackle along with Jamie Baisley. But a nice run by Raphael Cooper, who has brought a little quickness to the offense. So I think that play wanted to go inside because you got that eye formation at lead blocker, but Raphael just said, the heck with that, I'm going outside. Cooper passed outside for a first and 10, first and goal for Memphis. Ball at the five yard line, Drucken Miller four for four on this drive for 48 yards. Cooper on the left side, near the one yard line. And Cooper to the one, but there's a flag down on the play. Raphael Cooper is like pouring smoke through a keyhole. He's hard to get a hold of. Smoke through a keyhole. That's an old Oklahoma term. Oh. Well, let's see what this penalty is, but I'll tell you one thing, he's a tough little nut too. Oh! Report, report! Report. What's, what's Let me give the signal. Let me give the signal. Watch, Hang on. Please. I love, hey, listen up now. I, Outside Chicago. Not a smart penalty. Yeah, what are we going to do? A non contact penalty. You don't want those, and that's going to make Ron Meyer have even more gray hair. Well, they came up short, right? Three times. So they're, three times. They'll get the down over or whatever. Hey, here we go now. Get an attitude. I right. You go, I right, here we go. So I right. That's it. Right. decline. Yeah. Second down and goal from the one yard line. Memphis football. High formation. Get ready. Roosevelt Fox, number 42, 270 pound pullback. Lined up in front of Rafael Cooper. Cooper gets a handoff. Penetration oh. by Chicago and Peeps. Keep it up, come on. With a penetration. Yeah, get up. Thinks out of Ohio State, former All Big Ten linebacker. Okay, here you go. Time out, time out, ref. Oh, and Raphael Cooper limping. Walk it off. Come on, walk As a result of that, Memphis has called a timeout. Well, folks, while we have a timeout on the field, we'll take a quick timeout ourselves with uh, Memphis football on the one. We're back live here on NBC, the XFL and NBC tonight, Chicago leading Memphis 17 to 12 here in the second quarter with Memphis threatening. They have a third and goal from the two yard line of the Chicago Enforcers. Truck to Miller. And Rafael Cooper. And he tried to, he tried to sneak it over. No. Cooper ruled down before he crossed the goal line. 
That's going to bring up a fourth down play for Memphis. Here's another look at that defense. That, that's always a hard call for an official because watch. He, you know, is his knee down now and he's reaching across? Absolutely. So that's got to be moved back. Go, here we go. Memphis looks like Let's go. they're going to go for it here. Iso on one. Watch him. 6 2. Fourth and goal for the Maniacs. Rafael Cooper. Fumble. Chicago recovers the fumble. Wow. So now, Memphis gets no points. Well, is that the first turnover, JR? Which Memphis is second to the bottom. He was some amazed. Starting outside linebacker, number 55 out of North Carolina. A nice hard hit there. Well, that thing, that thing shot out of there. Well, I, it didn't look like he was hit, did it? It's just kind of like he was going to swing it forward and it got Shots. loose. Cooper maybe carried well, the ball a little loosely. Yeah, there. well, Memphis is, uh, they've, uh, they're minus five in takeaways, giveaways. Chicago's not that much better at minus three, so now they're minus two. Chicago football, they dodged the bullet there. McDougal looking to throw. Oh. A little slant pattern. Intended for Junior Lord, incomplete Corey Sawyer. The defensive back out of Florida State on the coverage. McDougal. Raphael, four straight tries, couldn't get in the end zone. What happened on that last fumble? I just tried to stretch the ball over there. And somebody hit it, so I lost. What's the ball? This is four. That pretty well sums it up. Yeah. Raphael saw it. That's his story, and he's sticking to it. Yeah. Second down, 10. Back to the pressure. And drop down. Shante Carver. Shante Carver, number 78 on the sack. Former number one draft pick of the Dallas Cowboys. Has knocked out two quarterbacks this year. Yeah, let's look at it this way. You think Kevin did get hurt. There goes Shante Carver to the oh. bottom of your screen. That's the old lookout block. Yeah, he, he just flat out beat Derek Turner. Got to get good position on the guy, and he just give the old swim move, and off he goes. Third down at Lake Michigan for the enforcers. Third and 22. McDougal. Got some time. Look at this. Not open. Leverson. Oh, go forward. Leverson, the ball, ball carrier. <laughs> Tackle made by Tyrone Bell. Wow. And Leverson was, he was wide open. Yeah, good job by McDougal again, moving around, moving around. You know, with his running ability, you would have thought he would just take off, but with 22 yards to go, no way he'd make it. And not a bad job by the offensive lineman. No, not at all. See here, he could have taken off. He's got a strong arm. Now, go forward, buddy. Get your first down. Everson, a three-year starter for the Minnesota Move, Golden Gophers. White, 291. White, 291. Seven. Chicago, the big defensive stand, a big conversion there on third uh -oh. down. Uh-oh. Wide open. McDougal again. Pass complete to number 83, Aaron Bailey. Averaging 24 yards a catch. Number one in the XFL, John Williams, the defender. Doesn't look like he's afraid to go in there either in the middle a little bit. Bailey, 5'10", 190. Yep. The Memphis team seems to have lost a little inspiration after their running back for Sean Long. Yeah, but that shouldn't happen. Uh, he plays offense. The defense should tighten their belt a little bit here. Junior Lord in motion. Uh oh. McDougal looking for Lord. Rico Clark defending. Lord was the motion man. McDougal is uh, certainly under control here tonight. And has had a very efficient game. He's made plays when he's had to make the plays. 
Well, yeah, just like that third down at 22. I mean, the defense does the job, gets them the ball, and which could have been a disastrous position to be punting from your own end zone. They're right now, they're on the 44-yard line of the Maniacs. That did a five of nine tonight. 14 yards, lowered in motion. McDougal's got plenty of time, now being pressured, and dumps the ball out of bounds. That's it, throw it away. Marvin Thomas pressuring the quarterback. McDougal didn't make any dumb mistakes on there, Dickie. He saw no. that his, his well, men were covered, and he, he threw it away. You know what they do a lot of times also in passing situations, and I'm speaking of Memphis's defense, they'll bring in five defensive backs, six defensive backs, seven even. And right now, they've got, what, two, three, four, five, maybe six out there. And so what happens, they're, they're fine deep. They're tough to beat deep, but inside, in that 15, 18-yard range, they're vulnerable. They're down for Chicago, and we've got movement. And Chicago certainly cannot afford any uh, unforced errors, and that's what we have there. You know, all along, there's, there's nothing worse than the jumping off sides. Prior to the snap, false start, number 60, offense. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Tony Ramirez, the offensive right tackle, guilty of moving on that play. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Well, that's, uh, but, but uh, you know, uh, on a total, the penalties are down, and that's that's good. It means people are starting to concentrate better, uh, starting to work at it a little bit. Third down 15 for Notre Dame's Kevin McDougal making his second start. And that is a two-minute warning here in the first half. We've got a good ball game down here in Memphis on a perfect night. Chicago leads the extreme. Maniac 70 to 12. Fans here in Memphis having a great time tonight. Their team down by five to the Chicago Enforcers with two minutes to go in the in the first half, Chicago six plays, 31 yards on this current drive. It all started with the recovered fumble in the end zone. Third down 15 for Kevin McDougal. Red Coleman in motion. McDougal back to throw. Looking for Junior Lord, but Pass incomplete, Rico Park on the coverage. Brings up a fourth down in a punting situation for Chicago. Andy Crossland does the punting as well as the place kicking. Damon Dotson will be deep to receive this kick. That if it goes 25 yards, Dick becomes a live football. Sure does. I'm just, I'm just thinking about Memphis and, the, and how they've been snake bit. You know, Salam fumbled a couple times in uh, their game against Las Vegas. Then Rafael, Rafael fumbles here. There's a kick flag down on the play. Now this guy can pump. And David Dodson. Come on. Running out of bounds. Mr. Buckus is not. Well, listen oh, to him. Yeah, yeah, some of their fans don't like it either. Yeah, turn up the field, get some more yards. Damon Dodson. I'll tell you what, Memphis has had some problems this year. As Dick said, they have been snake bit, their own worst enemy, in their defeats this season. As was the case in week two versus Las Vegas. Salam's fumble. See, I, you know, that, that could have been, that was probably charged with Salam, but I don't know if the handoff really got to him. But look what, it, what, look what happened to him. That's Talk good. about giving up the ball is bad enough, but then they score on you. And then later in the game, Salam fumble again near the goal line. A controversial play. Memphis thought the Salam was down. Well, see, he, he was trying to reach, and then, well, we can we can go to the we can go to the bathroom right here. By the time go, go <laughs> finishes this run. Those 36-year-old legs of Kirk Cavea, a hundred-yard touchdown run. So Memphis has been their own worst enemy thus far this season offensively. Crook and Miller back to throw. Crook and Miller hitting Raphael Cooper out of the backfield. Levi might have been 36-year-old legs, but he's got an 18-year-old heart. Kid just coming back because he wants to play. Levi doesn't need the money. As a lot of these guys, they just they just love to play, and that's what I'm saying. Uh, you know, we don't have a zipper on our chest to see what kind of heart we all have. 
Robert Miller. Look at this. Five. Oh, man. Finds this man near midfield. Oh. Darrell Hobbs up to the 47-yard line of Chicago. Aaron Humphreys and Jason Bray make the tackle with a minute. 15 to go in the first half. What were you talking about? His, his accuracy, good range. It seems like he's completing him. I think uh, I was wrong. Well, the coach says that uh, the guy's got a gun, Bruckham Miller. He can throw the deep ball, but he's, uh, he has problems with the intermediate pass. He well, hasn't had a problem tonight. I don't think so. Good job. All right, here we go. Bruckham Miller, 9 of 13. 157 yards in this ball game. Been throwing long, going? Going? Going in the, the middle. That'll be a very critical possession here from Memphis. They trail by five. Well, again, yeah. Chicago pins, but let's four just hope they don't break when they get 50. down there. Close. Set, blue 40. Chicago blue needs a 40. rush here. <laughs> Ruffin Miller's got time. Oh! And Brooklyn Miller. That ball went right off the shoulder pad. Of his, Intended receiver Daryl Hobbs, Quincy Coleman on the on the coverage, or Keith Crawford, I should say, the intended receiver. That says, talk about bad luck. Obviously, that ball should have been caught. A break for Chicago. Third down play for Memphis. Blue 40. Ball to Chicago 49 yard line. Brooke Miller with time has his man. Charles Jordan, the on the catch inside around the 30-yard line of Chicago. Quincy okay, Coleman on the coverage. All right, Dolphin Hunter. See, I don't, I, well, I, I don't understand why on third down, clamp it down a, a little bit. You know what I mean? I, I, I know it's, you know, you're going to, you're hoping for the clock to run out, keep them from scoring, but. It's a first down. Chicago on the free man defense. Struck and Miller again. Short pass. Defeated to Mark Thomas. And Thomas knocked out of bounds. Uh-oh. Flag there. And a flag yeah. down. And that is, that could be very costly. It's a face mask. I would think we're. Thomas, a big a tight end out of North Carolina State. And Mays may have been detected for the penalty. 51 seconds to go in the first half. Here's another look. Keep ground uh, number 55. What, uh, well, it's a ticky-tack uh, face guard, so face mask, so it's a five-yard, I think. Here's another look at it. Yeah. And there's a grabbing the uh, the head here. Yeah. Number 55 in a defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. So Chicago now finds themselves in a, a hell of a predicament here. The football is just outside the in, enforcer 10-yard line with 51 seconds to Jim's go. At the game. Yeah, we're too close for it. They, 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 they get the hell out of there. Well, I'm afraid. The, uh, you're talking about double count? No. Okay, I'll tell you what. Listen to me. Listen to me. Oh, let him call, let him call it now. Think about this, it. This will protect it. Be ready for the free safety whip. Right, ready for the blitz. All right. And, and look well, here. Uh, next Saturday on NBC at 8 Eastern, Eastern, 5 Pacific, we don't have Casey Weldon and the Bolts yeah, no, okay. make a trip to the desert as they face the rough and tumble defense of the Las Vegas Outlaws. That's the XFL on NBC next Saturday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. And, of course, our friends in Chicago, that's... Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Put it away. By the way, Orlando leading okay. Las Vegas 14 yeah, yeah, to 9 at the half. And Orlando is uh, undefeated. Uh, they've been bailing out, haven't they? Yeah, okay. All right. So let's don't let's leave the nine wall right there. Okay. You know, talking to both of these coaches then, uh, over the weekend here, uh, they, you know, they're not really intimidated by Orlando's 5-0 and record and going into tonight's game. And, like Memphis last week, I, I think they blew the game. Yeah, they they should have won, won it. Uh, I had I had Chicago the first game of the year. They lose to Orlando 33 to 29. Yep. And and Chicago did not play well that night. That's why this game's a key game Mike's for them. Mike's 50. Mike's 50. Key drive. Blue 80. For Memphis. Blue 80. They don't score a lot in the second half. 
Bruckenmiller looking to throw, finds his man, complete down to the one yard line. Aaron Humphreys on the tackle, Charles Jordan, the receiver. Corey Ivey right, right, also right, there. Right, 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 down thrown by the back judge Quincy Coleman on the coverage Big Ike Davis number 69 was a we had 12 on the field and then we have an illegal formation we'll offset the second out okay we got numbers guys 71 71 just he just ran in right now Illegal formation, number 71 of the offense did not report. However, there were 12 defensive players on the field. Those two penalties will offset okay. and will repeat second down. Number 71 ho, ho, ho. is an hey, eligible hey, receiver. Hold up. I want to see it. 71. 71 went in the game. Hey! Hey, come here! Come here! Is that, right? Is that right where that ball is? They said it's right. I didn't mess up the ball. Three tight, three tight. Split left, fly right. Sprint right, G. Half back flat. So Kippy calls the, calls the plays there. A lot of commotion, a lot of going on there. Second down and goal for Memphis. Six two, six two. I don't think so. I mean, he, he got to play in plenty of time. Pots in motion. Brooke and Miller rolling out. Throwing. Oh, complete. Jamie Baisley on the uh, on the coverage, and Brooke and Miller lost his hat. See what happens when you when you, when you have a flag throw or two like that previous play. The coaches get involved, players get involved, and, and you really don't have that much time in between. You got to get rolling here, and that's why you say, "Well, is is Kippy losing it or, or whatever?" No, he got the he got the call in the truck, got the playoff. It's just that you would love to have a little extra time to yell at the officials, but shouldn't do it anyway. Now they got a timeout going here. Well, timeout on the field as uh, it will give the opportunity for Kippy Brown to speak with quarterback Jim Druckenmiller. Chicago called the timeout. This was uh, in the promised land see, earlier and fumbled. See, see right here, here's the official is telling Jim what, what was going on that last play about you know, when you have an uncovered guy on the end with a 71 number, and if you don't report, that's that's, that's a penalty. That was the last series I'll of see. fumble by Raphael Cooper Dick. Yeah, but where's the guy that hit him? He said that he got hit. He was hit low there. What he tried to do was reach forward with the with his arm in the ball, and it just squirted through. Memphis now get, facing get a up here. third down and goal for the two-yard line. Right, you got 19 seconds. You got plenty of time to get this done. Uh, you know, Druckenmiller, 6'4", 236. All you're doing is you're coming in. Pretty imposing guy. guy you yeah, you never, you never, you would think he'd sneak one of these one-yard deals over there. But with the big backs he has, uh, okay, here you go. Let's, go. let's see what he's going to do. Hey, our right slot, quick max right, 39. Rashad Salon injured in the first quarter of the let's leading go, let's go. rusher here in the XFL. Let's go. With a shoulder right, injury. So, Raphael Cooper, the running back, behind Roosevelt Potts. Druckenmiller calls the signals. Druckenmiller, quick out. And pass broken up by Chicago. Corey Ivey on the, uh, on the coverage for Chicago. So now it is decision time for Coach Kidney Brown. I think that decision Dick, has been made. Line. Looks like Jeff Hall, with 15 seconds to go on fourth and goal, is going to come in and attempt a field goal. Bobby spotted at the 14, a 24 yard field goal attempt. 
Jeff Ball, played collegially at Tennessee. Kick is up and good. Ball now nine for 12 on field goals this year. Pretty accurate kick. Yep. Kind of the way the offense from Memphis this year, field goals, not touchdowns. But Memphis, with that field goal, draws within two of Chicago, 17 to 15. Well, see, Chicago, you know, they gave up a drive here, and, and they're playing it close to the, <laughs> pretty nervously, you know, if they score a touchdown there instead of the field goal. How many times have you seen teams going to the prevent defense well, yeah, too early? I know, I know, and I don't, I don't really have the answer for it. It's just, you know, you're told to let them complete in front of you, but... But if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, why not play hard? And, you know, get somebody back or, or have one uh, safety that covers you real deep, play center field. Because you know, the longer you throw the ball, the easier it is for a safety who's playing in the middle of the field to get to either sideline. But when they all back up, you're in trouble. Corey Ivey broke that that play up on third down, back deep to receive, and the ball was taken by Charles Wiley at the 20. Wiley, a fullback, returns it to the 26 or 7 yard line. With six seconds to go in the first half, Jim Kitts, backup fullback. Now here's my deal. The here's my deal. I, I'm not even going to look. Yeah. He takes a knee. Why? Why not? You know, because of the clock, the 25 second clock and everything else, every play is a premium. Why not? Go for the bomb. So what if everybody knows about it? Now, I'm not going to look. I'm not going to look. Are you going to take a knee or what? Well, I, I can't tell. <laughs> I think oh, it, man. There's your knee. You know what I'm saying? Yep. If you average 50 plays because of this short clock, this 20, you know, you divide that by four, that's how many points. I mean, that's how many plays you get a quarter. 13 or whatever the heck it is. Every play is important. Ron Meyer choosing to go the conservative route here in the last play of the first half. Chicago trying to get fight their way back into the playoff race. They can do it. And right now, Chicago leading Memphis here in the Liberty Bowl by two, 17 to 15. Well, ladies and gentlemen, right now, Chicago has the lead here at halftime. And Let's take you back and take a look at some of the action from the first half. And certainly, Rashawn Salam, before he was injured, made his presence felt, Dick. Right. He started off pretty good, you know. He scored there behind Roosevelt Potts' lead block. Now here's little Avery. Little Jared Bug, and off to the races He's, he goes. That made the score 7-6 to six for the extra point. I expect to see more uh, Avery in this second half. Chicago added a field goal. And look at this bomb. The Jordan, uh, that guy's, like we've been saying all night, he's got... Good time speed, man. He can move. Drunk's a little happy there. No doubt about it. Listen, LaShawn Johnson right up the guts. Find a good effort. 17 to 12 there. And then the big now, fumble here that Chicago recovered. Right. Now this problem starts. And that was after Salam got hurt. And it, it seems like they're snake bit again. Memphis. It's either fumbles. They're, I don't know. They might be leading the league in, in turnovers right now. Memphis has not been a great second half football team here. Yeah, but you, you talk to Kippy and he, and he says we moved the ball. We moved the ball. Well, you don't score. score. Yeah, you got to score. Uh, so things are looking pretty good for Chicago. I, I got a little nervous there at the end. You know that bend, 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 and don't break. But they got lucky with a fumble in the end zone and with that third down and 22, McDougal hits for a first down. That was a big play too. So all in all, it's. Memphis still being snake bit. Now we'll have to see if Salam is going to come back because I think they need him to come back. No doubt about it. Uh, uh, Chicago up by two points. And folks, don't forget later tonight, uh, a very special edition of Saturday Night Live. Well, guys, to say that the Memphis Maniacs have received some bad news would be an understatement. Rashawn Salam, bad nerve in his left shoulder, out for the game. They don't know his status for next week. It gets even worse. Backup running back Raphael Cooper, torn MCL out for the season so right now they're going to the number three running back for the second half horrible news for memphis wow and memphis losing their two running backs brooke miller now has a huge responsibility to to keep this offense on the field and the ball moving without a running attack and that's not going to be easy 
Well, you know, you, you, so you got Roosevelt Potts, who's, you know, really a fullback, a big fullback. But then you also have Jim Kick, Kitts, I guess it is, and, and he's a big back. So I don't know if they're going to go with the two big backs or they're going to find somebody to play halfback and just leave it up to Drunk to start throwing the ball more. Well, Drunk and Miller has had plenty of time to throw tonight behind that huge offensive line. And Dick, we uh, take a look at our Miller genuine draft stats here at halftime and uh, it has been a, a quite frankly a well played first half by both football teams uh, certainly both kind of half ass self-destructing here we'll take a look at the stats uh, Chino and draft will be colder in a moment Memphis kicking off to Corey Ivy and Ivy the head of steam up across the 20 yard line down the 23 and now, as we promised, I know you're waiting on the edge of your seats there in Chicago. Here are the stats. Well, you got, uh, let's see, 78 yards. Well, that was a, that was Avery had a nice crack that one for a touchdown. And uh, passing yards, look at this, 206 to 103 for Chicago. But there's that turnover. That that cost a touchdown, I think, you know, when they Absolutely. double right in the end zone. Memphis. Possession is to, the, to, the, to Memphis, but... They, they don't lead the score. Chicago leading by two. First play of the second half. Kevin McDougal handing to John Avery. Nothing wrong with John Avery. And nothing wrong with the Chicago running attack as Avery brought down by Richard Hogan's. Chicago, a lot of love on the field. Everybody ever tell you they loved you, Dick, on the football field when you played for the Bears? <laughs> no. Did, did no, George Hallis ever tell you he loved you? No. He didn't. No, I, I had hoped he liked me, but not loved me. <laughs> Four. You know, if I had it my way, it would be another player in football where 51. One guy did it, that's it. And I'm happy he's with me tonight. Second out of four, six-yard game by John Avery. Avery again. Looking for somewhere to go. <laughs> See what they try to do, Jr. That they spread it out, leave him as the remaining back, and then just toss it to him or give it to him and let him just try to break that front. Memphis really did a good job in containing him there. DJ Cooper, 6'3", 290 pounder out of Arkansas, makes the tackle. Third down play for Chicago. Half right. Third and Kevin McDougal. 6'2", 194 out of Notre Dame. His first start last week resulted in the XFL Offensive Player of the Week honor. McDougal got time. Yes. Pass complete to Junior Lord, Corey Sawyer, defending on the play. Oh, I was just going to say, it's nervous time for Chicago. They're getting these third downs. And uh, coming into this game, they were very poor at converting third down situations. But tonight, they're hitting on them. Two Seems like they're better off having third and ten or something. In it Chicago to a, to a four tonight, Dick, on third down conversions. Four. First and ten, Chicago. The football is at the uh, Chicago 44-yard line. McDougal to Avery. And Avery McDougal. Richard Hogan's. What a slobber knocker tackle on John Avery. Hogan's a great linebacker, man. He's really... Hogan's a hero here in Yeah, the he's, he's, he's their guy. Talking to their head coach, Kippy Brown, he said, this is the guy. He's the real McCoy. He leads the team in tackles. Does Richard Hogan's. No gain on the play. Leverson, number two, is put out wide to the right. Red Coleman in motion. Three step drop and pass knocked down at the line of scrimmage by number 94, Patrick Sapp. Sapp, a 6'4, 258 pound linebacker out of Clemson, has got his hands up. Yeah, he, he's mad about that he didn't catch it. Now, I don't know if, I don't know if he got that quick a reaction. Because as you see, here it comes. And, Another big third down play for Chicago. Memphis has not been successful stopping these third and longs. Ironically enough. We'll see more motion here. 
Let Diggle back to throw. Over the middle to Avery. Avery's got room to the 40. Avery down to the 35, to the 34-yard line. Trey Thomas and Richard Hogan's make the tackle. See, they had six defensive backs out there, and that's fine. But what Chicago does is come in undercover, and, uh, you know, if, he, if he's hooked up on a linebacker or whatever, which he is, he gets away from him. Oh, it's a you middle linebacker. You can't. Is, am I reading this correctly? I mean, uh, did I just see him trying to cover Avery? There's no way. Richard it's, Hogan's or any other linebacker. I mean, he's, he's good. Avery. He's good, but come on. First down, Chicago. Ball, 37-yard line. Pump fake. Looking long. That's a flag. You take it. And no, no flag on the play. Well, you, you heard... Uh, the Memphis sideline there. They thought, well, it was, well, here comes a flag. But it's, you know, you can't go 82, over a guy to get to the ball. John Williams, the defender on the play. Aaron Bailey, the intended receiver. Oh, I guess, I guess, uh. Yeah. Second yeah, down. Memphis, uh. Black Try to put up. We got uh, five men on the line of scrimmage now. Memphis may be blitzing here. Movement on the line. Memphis may be in the zone. Deshaun Johnson, the ball carrier, has nowhere to go. But I think Memphis was all sides there, Dick. Shante, you think so? 78. I think he jumped a little bit early. What's the call? Second down. It was second down and, and 10. So uh, Chicago obviously should take the penalty. Replay second down. Five yard penalty. Repeat. Second down. I don't know, second down. I don't know if he thought they were going to be passing or whatever, but he took an outside charge and he he got he got out got off a little bit too early there. Shante he, was anticipating. He's got to try to contain this guy. John Avery back in the ball Down, game, replacing with Sean Johnson. Avery number 20. Out of Ole Miss. Well played ball game tonight. Only three penalties. Knock on wood. Chicago showing blitz. Option. Avery gets the pitch. Avery the 20. Avery the 10. Avery the oh, ball. Football on the play. And I think Memphis got it. DJ Cooper, I think the man that's recovered the ball for Memphis. Avery made a hell of a run. Stripped from behind. That's too bad because that was a... That was a great play. That was an option play, Jr. I mean, uh, McDoodle was I like that. running like, I like a, an option. Pass 56. Tossed it out. Check flat. Yeah, and unfortunately, hey, after a great run, he fumbles. Here's another look at it in real time. John Avery gets the, the option pitch. <laughs> See what I mean? He jump, jump, jump. He gets it ripped out. Avery <laughs> strips the ball from behind. And Memphis now, the football from their own eight-yard line. First and ten, Maniacs. Mike's 50, Mike's 50. Who trail by two. 240. 240. Play action. Druckenmiller finds Mark Thomas. Hey, maybe, maybe Memphis... Uh... That will change the luck here. Not a bad uh, read by Joe Druckenmiller on the intermediate pass. Corey, sorry, you guys needed that huge play. Talk about the turnaround. What did you guys discuss at halftime? Well, we just got to come out as a defense and make plays. You know, we haven't done it. We didn't do it last week, and we didn't do it this week. So it was a good play that um, one of my linebackers made, and I just recovered a fumble. Druckenmiller back to live action, looking to throw. Has a man, Charles Jordan. Up to the 32-yard line. That'll be a first and 10. Jason Bray out of Auburn makes the, the tackle for Memphis. Memphis has yet to score offensively this season in the second half. I find that hard to believe. I do, too. I mean, they, they, and like Kippy said, they, they move the ball well. It's just that they just don't convert. Bo Morgan is the, uh, the running back. 5'9", 200 pounder out of Air Force. He was a wishbone quarterback at Air Force. And Morgan gets a carry. And Morgan lunging forward. Morgan replacing Rashawn Salam and Raphael Cooper. Both injured tonight. Jimmy Baisley on the tackle along with Aaron Humphreys. Talking about the scoring woes of Memphis. 
They've got three field goals in the second half this year. Yeah, look at that. 59 points. First half. Second. Proof. Well, Drucken Miller wants to change that tonight. He's going to do it with a an emergency tailback, for the lack of a better term, in Bo Morgan. Drucken Miller looking to throw. Has some time. Pass complete to the tight end. Mark Thomas, 6'4", 250-pounder out of North Carolina State. Having a nice ball game at his tight end position. Isaac yeah, and Gray make the pass. Yeah, that's a nice catch, but, but look at the touch that Drunken Miller has on this ball. Over two Chicago defenders. Mark comes up with a nice catch. First down. Ben, but don't break has been the credo of the Chicago defense this year. They're trying to protect a two-point lead. Play action to Morgan. The deep ball by Drunken Miller. And pass is incomplete. Fans here in Memphis want interference. Jason Bray on the coverage. Pass intended for Charles Jordan, the, the fastest man on the field. All right, see the, see the offensive player? The defensive player, as long as he's looking for the ball, that's not uh, pass interference. And I understand because Memphis has really had some shaky calls that might have cost them a game or two. Second down for the Maniacs. Jim Druckenmiller, the big quarterback. Pressure on Druckenmiller, and down he goes. Mays shooting the gap there. Mays with a sack. The big linebacker, 6'3", 249, out of North Carolina, makes the play there. Yeah, you, well, you see the back. He should have made that block. He, he, he missed it. Was, he, he couldn't really see it there, but that's his responsibility. Little uh, Bo Morgan. Yeah, he can't play him. He's just thrown into, the, thrown into the fray right here. New York with six DBs in the game, or Chicago, I should say. Memphis, Drucken Miller looking to throw. Drucken Miller's going to run and run down from behind. Jim Drucken Miller brought down by number 96. That's Sterling Palmer. What's this? Wow, there's. What's going on here? It's. Fourth and Fourth and nine for Memphis and. Uh, Jeff Hall, take off. Place the kicker and the punter. Point. Take off, then the over, then mark. Number 24, Corey Ivy, deep to receive the ball. It will certainly travel 25 yards. Great kick. And ball goes untouched into the end zone. It'll be a touchback, but we have a flag on the play. And as we said earlier, not too many penalties tonight. No. Only four. In the will. Downfield, number 50 of the kicking team. The five-yard penalty will be tacked on to the end of the run. First down. So Chicago gets the football back, leading by two. We are back live in Memphis. Jim Ross alongside number 51, Dick Buckus. Chicago leading 17 to 15. 5-12 to go in the third quarter. Enforcer ball on the 25-yard line after the penalty. Humphreys was illegally downfield. He can't leave a, on a punting play in the XFL until the ball has been kicked. McDougal to John Avery. And Avery nailed by number 97, Antonio Anderson. Did I meet you before? Then I meet you at Ole Miss. Cornell Menifee, number 40, played at Mississippi State. Well, of course, John Aiken played at Ole Miss. Yeah, a lot of players at Memphis are from this area. Ole Miss and Mississippi State, the great rivalry down in the south. Green, Green, Second down to seven. Motion by Chicago. McDougal, pump uh -oh. fake, looking deep. Got a man and overthrew Junior Lord, who thought he was held up around the 40-yard line, but that was not to be. Corey Sawyer, speedy cornerback out of Florida State on the coverage. But Junior Lord, he was there. Well, you know, it's... Here, here we go. 
you know, it was a stop and go, you know, and, and uh, right away everybody's going to jump on the officials. Well, that was that replay there, as you, you see it afterwards. But. Ron Meyer certainly thought it was holding. Of course, he may be a little biased. There's no book and run now. No, no harassing the receivers after five yards. McDougal, short throw out to Leverson, incomplete. You see that little Avery throw a block in there? Avery's tough. He's a tough little nut. Avery tough in a $3 stake. Tougher than Matt down in Oklahoma. I, mean, uh, I like Matt. That took us several years where I got, got through it. Damian Dotson back deep to receive from Memphis, number 81, activated uh, yesterday. Going to practice squad all season, making $1,000 a week. Well, I'll tell you what, they're going to get the ball in pretty good field position here. Uh, this three and out, Chicago's got to do better than that. Crossing, kicking the ball, left footed. Line drive kick, ball bounces, you got to get on it. Ooh, what a hit! Oh, what a slobber knocker that was! Yeah. Jamie Baisley just almost beheaded Damian Dotson. Now, see, that's that's what we were hoping with, with the no fair catch rule. Here the ball comes and it hits the ground, which means it's free. I believe it went past 25 yards. Now it's Boom. free game, man. Man, that Chicago kid is tough. And right now, Chicago leads Memphis by two. We are back live in Memphis. Great hit by that young man from Chicago, Jamie Baisley. Yep, 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 yep. And he's had a heck of a ball game here. Yep. Jim Druckenmiller, 16 of 25 tonight, passing the ball for Memphis. And uh, didn't we say something about penalties now? I think we jinxed ourselves, Dick. <laughs> Prior to the snap, false start, number 69, offense. Ike Davis just got in town. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Number 69 was moving a little prematurely there. And as we said, Druckenmiller's had a, a nice night throwing the ball, Dick. You know what this means here? This, see the deep passes? One for one on the left, four for uh, six for 55 yards down the middle, five for six on the right. It's the same M.O., you know? If, if you do something well, just keep going with it until they stop you. There's another one. And Truckenmiller, oh. Corey Ivey separated Charles Jordan from the football, but Truckenmiller put the ball right on the money. You know, it, you would you would think, well, Black oh, down. geez, he can't throw it, uh, you know, in the you know 10 to 15 yard range. Well, if he completes the long ones, he doesn't have to. Exactly. And what that First is time. doing. Huh? Is making up for the yardage yeah, that you'd be handing off to here. Salam, who's in the locker room know, with a, probably an ice bag on, 46 on his shoulder. The defense. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. So Chicago, the holding penalty. Yeah, you can't, you gotta, you know, Memphis is on what, the 35 and a half yard line now. You, you can't let them get a drive going here. Three. Shut them down. Yep. Memphis football, first and 10. 2.30. In the third quarter, Drunken Miller to throw. And good coverage there. Let's listen to Drunken Miller here. Come on. Come on. Well, he was whispering. 56 something on one. Look at Swap. Look at Swap 50. There's Drunken Miller again. With time. Beautiful yep. catch. Beautiful catch by Jordan at the Chicago 45 yard line. Jamie uh, yeah. was trying to claim to hit the ground, but no like dice. That's Jamie, that's that was a good catch. Corey <laughs> Ivey, the defender. Yeah, I'm giving uh, Jordan a lot of room there, Dick. Well, he's got speed, uh, Jr. You got to, you know, the, the old stop and go, and this guy can throw it country mile. I mean, I, I thought I'd throw that in there. Three. <laughs> That's from my benefit, right? The country boy stuff. Another now, pass complete. Now, have they gone away from the run, or have they gone away from it? Binks and uh, Coleman on the uh, defending on the play. 
Well, there's Memphis has lost their top two running backs, right. uh, Rashawn Salam and Raphael Cooper. They got a backed up wide receiver, Bo Morgan, who played quarterback in the wishbone at Air Force, playing tailback. Morgan, number 32, a heck of a little athlete, but not what Kippy Brown would have envisioned going in this game. There's there you go. Morgan there for a little or no gain, and Mays on the tackle. Morgan, a 5'9", 204-pounder, stepping in for the uh, injured Salam and Cooper. Give us some amaze from North Carolina. Big offensive line for Memphis. They were controlling the game early. Chicago's made some adjustments. Come on. Drucken Miller in the shotgun. Got time. Found his man. Pass complete to Daryl Hobbs. Out of Pacific, Corey Ivy. Again on the tackle down to the 17-yard line of Chicago. Memphis first and 10. Well, you see, Mays, he just didn't drop back far enough to get in between the receiver and, and Drucken Miller. Folks, this is going to bring us to the end of the third quarter of play here in the Liberty Bowl. Chicago leads by two, but the Memphis Maniacs have the football and are driving. Pass is complete to Daryl Hobbs, Corey Ivey on the tackle. The Memphis running game has almost dissolved yep. with the Salam and Cooper leaving the ball game and a truck and Miller. 19 of 29, 309 yards, and still Memphis no touchdowns in the second half this season. That's their deal. They, this is all great. We can read all the stats you want, but boys, you got to get it across the goal line. High formation. Bo Morgan, the tailback. Jim Kitts, the big pullback, and Morgan. Ooh, the play fake. Drucken Miller. The 6'4", 236 pounder, rumbling down to the six yard line. Nice play fake by Crookenville. I think he, uh, I think he did that on his own. Wesley Coleman on the tackle. Paul Morgan there is looking at him like, did I screw up or what? He just said no. Jim probably took it on his own. Good thing. <laughs> Rick and Miller's not the speediest guy I've seen. No, no. He's nothing like as athletic as McDougal is for Chicago. I think a Rick and Miller's 40 is kept on a clock or a sundial. Minute. Yeah, a minute clock. Or maybe a calendar. And Rick and Miller calls timeout before the play clock expires. Well, 13 19 to go in the football game. And Memphis has called timeout. Boom. 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 And the moon is out in Memphis. Now listen. Well, there are many kings in Memphis. Yeah, that's my hair. Including that guy. Nice hair. I got him. Memphis <laughs> is trying to score their first touchdown in the All second right. half this season. First and goal. Ball is on the six-yard line of Chicago. <clears throat> Brooklyn Miller. Throwing the ball. It's yeah. on. Nice catch. The tight end, the first touchdown scored in the second half this year by the Memphis Maniacs. And what? Memphis retakes the lead 21 to 17. Well, they got to feel good. You know, that's Buck's uh, fourth touchdown pass. Lays it in there. Nice little touch to it. Nice catch. Brecken Miller, 21 to 31, 321 yards, and two touchdowns here tonight. As Memphis will now attempt the extra point from the two-yard line. Quick pitch to Bo Morgan. Cut up field. Got close to the goal line. He's yeah, in. They're going to give it to him. And a penalty flag thrown after the play has been blown dead. But Bo, Bo Morgan, the former quarterback in Air Force wishbone offense, takes the pitch. It's 22 to 17. Memphis. Yeah, I think Personal a... foul, number 55, after the score. The score is successful. The 15-yard penalty will be administered on the kickoff. 
well. Well, that is a maze. He got flagged. He's got, he's not about something. And uh, that's going to certainly help. You got to get it back now. Not to uh, Chicago any favor as far as the field position is concerned. Listen to this hit. Oh, hell no. A lot of effort on the little guy's part. Bo Morgan, 5'9", 204. I think Mays just was kind of hot that he thought Bell maybe he didn't cross, ball didn't cross the goal line, but it did. And got tagged with a penalty. And, you know, isn't this something? You lose you lose your top two running backs, and, and yet now they score, what, the first time in a long time here. Take the lead, speaking of Memphis, of course. That's the man that scored a touchdown. Well, Jim, you guys picked a heck of a time to score your first second half touchdown of the year. We're just beginning, guys. It looks like you've completely abandoned the running game. Is that the case with your two starting running backs out? Uh, you know, I got to ask Kippy. Uh, whatever they ask, that's what we're going to do. Just execute. All right, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Brooke Miller's also got a nice set of sideburns. Yeah. Pork chops, what do they call those? Pork chop. I could have a pork chop right now. You know, I, I like that. They got good pork chop. Oh, yeah, that's the other white meat, you know. Yeah. But anyway, Back, we'll have that later, Dick. Okay. So Memphis will kick off from the 45-yard line. Seems like forever since Chicago has the ball, had the ball, right? Exactly. Corey Ivey back deep to receive. Chicago trailing 22 to 17. Uh oh, now what? Come on, come on, come on, Bell! Well, an East Rock. Oh, the alert for a power squib and an onside. The alert for Listen. They can't catch the football. Didn't they have power squibs when you played for the Bears? Power squib? That's what he called it, a power squib. Folks, we encourage you to tune in tomorrow to catch more XFL action at 4 Eastern on TNN. It will be the uh, Hitmen traveling to San Francisco to play the Demons in the Hell Hole. And then at 7 Eastern on UPN, it's a battle of two of the best quarterbacks in the XFL. It's Tommy Maddox and the LA Extreme visit Casey Weldon in the Birmingham Bolts. More XFL football tomorrow you can check out. What's the story here? They, they call a timeout. I couldn't believe it. Why? You know. Maybe they're, 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 they're. Well, the coach thinks they're maybe an onside of flow. Well, what? Well, no, maybe this, I don't know. Maybe they're. Well, they, it's a deep kick. Down to the five-yard line. Corey Ivey with the five. And upended by number 21. Johnny Williams, he's, he's all over. He's a good back, good defensive back. I don't know uh, why they would call a timeout. Well, did he call timeout? It was a timeout, yeah. Oh, my God. Williams on the tackle on that play. Strange timeout. Well, they give, that gives Memphis one timeout left, I believe, and, and Chicago has their three left. Oh, that was weird. Chicago uh, needs to get something going here offensively. A long drive would help the... Chicago uh, morale, to say the least. Play fake to Avery. Long pass. He's got, got him. He's got him. Roberson, number two. What a what a throw by McDougal, who aired it out. Murray Sawyer. What the heck are they? What the heck are they looking for? Nico Clark and uh, Corey Swinger. I mean. Ball down to the 20. I mean, look at it, right between them. 28 yard line of Memphis. Whoa, what a throw to Leverson. Right on the money by McDougal. And you the kid from Notre Dame's you know, got a nice arm. He does. And if you give him time, and, and uh, you know, where's, uh, where's Carver at? Greg Wheelan traded to uh, Chicago this week. There's that option. There's a little option to Avery. Ooh, hell. Hit there, Richard Hogan's uh, number uh, 54. Uh oh, there's something happening in the back, and McDougal is down. Take a look and listen to this play. McDougal 
took an elbow. I like to see that again. Yeah, Duda took an elbow. It looked like uh, as a player was running by him. I don't know if we got that again, but if we do, it's worth taking another look at. Oh, it didn't seem like there was a hard hit. Yeah. That was a strange play. You know, he ran the option, dumped it off, and I thought that's where he got hit was laid out. But he actually turned around, and then I, I, I didn't catch the number, but as the guy was going by, he gave him a little elbow. Nick, is that a, would that be a final offense, or is that just hard-nosed football? Well, I, I got to look at it again. I, I mean, if he deliberately threw an elbow, I mean, if it was toward the head, then I'd say, well, we're, we're going to have to check this out. Look at, look at so it see it again here. See, he gets rid of it. Now, Menifee comes along and just, no, I don't think that's, that's not findable. No. He gave it like a shove. Now, what may have happened, maybe that injury sustained when Carver hit him at the beginning. And then he just turned around and he went down, but. Right underneath the stern. That's why it was late. Frankly, I don't know if I should even eject him. I won't because I don't have a number. No, no. But he knocked him down. Punched him in the punched stomach. stomach. He punched him in the stomach. Yes. Wow. He didn't get that. It was kind of a shove into the, into the stomach. I, I certainly didn't think it was a late hit. Was it uh, unnecessary roughness, perhaps, in the right. official that, judgment? It wasn't, it wasn't necessary. I mean, he just gave him a shot as he ran by. But I'm sure you never did that, did you, in your career? Never just give a guy a shot no, the hell of it? No. <laughs> Jim Lester, the original starter at the uh, beginning of the season for Chicago, is the emerging quarterback. Young Matthews are from Wheaton, Illinois, but Paul Pelia will be the quarterback now. I don't know what's hurt out of him. I mean, I can't tell if it's a shot in the, you know, like Menifee, when he ran by, he just gave a little shot. But, you know, we're looking at that slow motion. Let's give the, you know, the referee or the official who called it the benefit of the doubt. I mean, things happen that fast, and, you know, he thought he saw it that way, so that's it. He's not protecting himself. Hold it, Frankie. Hold it, Frankie. He's Lefty Fox. He can block quarterbacks. He blocks. He blocks. Give me some pleas. They're falling on deaf ears. You guys are something now. Here's a little different look at it. You guys are something. I don't know. There's a shot there. We've got a lot of action here. I, no, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't find him fit. I think he, he might have been trying to do something, but he missed it. And uh, he made it look kind of, you know, nonchalant. I think he might have been injured when Carver hit him. I, well, Carver made another tackle there on John Avery. All they got to do, all they got to do is forget about it and start exactly. you know, moving the ball. Yeah, it's irrelevant now. Second down and seven ball on the 25-yard line of Memphis, Chicago, with Paul Pelia. Played three years in Notre Dame. The quarterback keeper on the rollout. And Shante Carver chasing Paul Pelia out of bounds. And McDougal coming back in the ball game, number 15. Back in the quarterback of the Chicago team. Yeah, you know, it, it's, you know, the way looking over it a couple of times, you know, he might have tweaked something here or there. And, and you sit at home and say, well, wait a minute. You know, he didn't get hit. But, you know, a couple times I got hurt, nobody hit me, man. One time I was just reaching out for something, and I pulled up a, a rib. So you never know. But fortunately for Chicago, he's back there, and he's, he sounds like he's in command. And knowing you, you didn't miss a play. Third down and nine. Ball in the 26-yard line. Kevin McDougal back to throw. He has time. Pass that up in the air and almost intercepted. McDougal got the ball not back in his face. Tyrone Bell on the play. And that's going to bring up a third down. Or fourth down play. Yeah, they're going to go for three, it looks like. See. Guys, real quick, a quick uh, update on Kevin McDougal. Just had the wind knocked out of him. He'll be fine. He'll finish the game. Good. Good. That's all it was. And... So, Andy Cross on the kicker is on the field. All right, all right. And Get the things ready. A little, indec little indecision, Dick. Uh, right. On Chicago's part. 
You know, they've had so many problems with their offensive line injuries and so forth. That penalty is declined. Four out. Four out. Illegal formation called on Chicago. 54. 54. 50. That's uh, the up back to 40. 50. A 43 yard field goal attempt by Andy Crossland. 6'3, 220 pounder. Kicks you know, left footed. They got Christopher Perez centering. If anything happens to Perez, I don't know who they got as a backup center because they're really thin. There it is. It's up. Line drive kick is no good. Ball had enough distance. But it was wide to the right. And Memphis holds. We come back. Memphis football leading by five. The XFL on NBC is brought to you by Cold Filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Never miss a genuine opportunity. By Burger King. In the land of burgers, Whopper is king. By the motor oil that provides maximum protection. Castrol GTX. Drive hard. And by Right Guard Extreme Sport. Get extreme. Get Right Guard. We are back live in the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm Jim Ross. Privilege to sit alongside number 51, Dick Buckus. Here on the 50-yard line. Memphis leading Chicago 22-17. Just under 10 minutes to play in the ball game. Big Jim Druckenmiller, the quarterback. Play action by Druckenmiller. Looking uh -oh. deep. Got a man. Got a man. Pass is complete to Charles Jordan to beat Jason Gray in single coverage on the play. A big play from the big arm of Jim Druckenmiller. I'm just sitting here trying to figure a uh, 57-yard pass or something in the air. Here's Jordan again. Got the big speed, all right? So he just flat out outruns out runs Brave. Jumps up, makes sure that they keep from getting an intercepted. Mike's 50, Mike's 50. It's a nice completion. All down to the 18-yard line. First and 10 for Memphis. Hand off to Bo Morgan and the little tailback. Weaves his way for about a three or four yard gain. Larry Fitzpatrick out of Illinois State makes the tackle along with JV Baisley. What you doing, man? Go left. Here we go, here we go now. Let's go. Slide left. Leave you on left. Come on, man. Great. Come on, finish it off. Fellas. One of your favorite plays as a middle Mike's linebacker. 50, Mike's 50. The lead draw. Yep. Here we go. Let's see if these linebackers react. He crowned 32. Morgan, the ball carry. Up near the first down marker, maybe a yard or two short. Maybe they made a nice play on that because it's stuff that was like a quick draw. And uh, we've got a Memphis Maniac on the ground. That's Bernard Williams, I believe. Nick Bernard Williams, 6'9, 250. Looks like a basketball yeah, player. Indeed. Former number one draft pick. But I was saying, uh, with Basley playing that against that draw, it's pretty. It's, you know, really a quick decision you got to make when you got a big old lineman coming at you. You got to make a move one way or the other, and, and he made the right move, made a nice little stop there. We got a good ball game here and a good ball game down in Orlando as well. What's going on there? Orlando leading Las Vegas now, 21 to 15. In the fourth quarter. Wow. 2.54 to go to the fourth quarter, Orlando. Well, Jeff Brown, the pass to Kevin Swain. Okay, let's well, go. go ahead, TD. Dolphin left. Flip Split from left, zip. Flip left, zip. Well, folks, while we have a break in zip. the action, we're going to take a very quick timeout. Can Chicago hold Memphis? We are back live in the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis leading 22-17. It's suck up your guts time for the Chicago defense. Big ball third on the, down. Yeah, big third down play. Dick Buckus ball on the 11-yard uh, line. Third down and three. There has Mike's been no, 50, 50, no running game no for Memphis here in the second half. It's been all Jim Druckenmiller. Back in the shotgun. Druckenmiller throw to the end zone. Intercepted. Yes. The ball is intercepted. Ooh, boy. Ball is intercepted by Corey Ivey. Number 24, the DB out of... Oklahoma makes the interception in the end zone. 
That's the second turnover in the end zone tonight for the Memphis right. Maniacs. Just and it gives away, Chicago yeah. another That's opportunity. That's their fourth interception of the year for Druck. See, he kind of lost it up there. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I really didn't see where he thought it was. I don't know. Good job by the Chicago. Man, they're playing, uh, playing it close to the best here. Kevin McDougal back in at quarterback. John Avery, the running back for Chicago. 7.45 to go in the ball game. Chicago down by five. McDougal back to throw. McDougal looking deep. The Cowman. And it's Avery. Again, that linebacker cannot no, pick don't Sapp stop. trying to cover John Avery, and that just ain't going to happen. Well, this time it was Sapp trying to cover. I don't know how they're they're doing that. I, I, hey. I mean, that's asking a lot. I, I don't care. I mean, uh, Avery can move and scoop like that, and Sapp might be able to run, but I mean, come on. Yeah, he's 6'4", 258. He's not going to keep up with a little center bug like Avery. I tell you what, until somebody figures out a way to stop Avery, he's going to get the football on this drive. Running or throwing, you got to put 19. it in number 20's hands. Black 19. Seven. Motion by Fred Coleman. McDougal, three step drop it up. A completed pass. Good hit by Corey Sawyer. Corey Ivory, you very well may have saved the game for your team. Explain the last interception. Oh. Well, he just ran a simple oh, little route, not just was underneath and got busy on the ball and just made the good play. What did you guys talk about at halftime? I know in the second half they've been throwing deep on you. What adjustments have you made? Just coming out, playing physical, make keep everything in front of us. Just score on offense, get the offense opportunity to score. First down, Chicago enforcers. Ball to the 44-yard line in Memphis. John Avery gets a handoff. Avery running into the umpire. Oh, Avery. Avery had some room there. He ran right into the umpire. He's laughing about it. <laughs> Rico Clark on the tackle. Here's another look at Avery. Man, he is he is so excited. <laughs> the That's the umpire, and he's, you know, come on, give him a break. The umpire's gonna let her this year go to the bank, what get a jacket. He threw I thought I saw him throw a little uh, forearm there. Man, don't forget Chicago yeah, returns home. The Soldier Field on Sunday, March 18th, hosting the San Francisco Demons. Tickets still available at all Ticketmaster outlets throughout the Chicagoland area. Pass complete. McDougal to Aaron Bailey. Corey Sawyer on the coverage. That's going to be a good game. Uh, As a mission, Chicago returning home. Play the San Francisco Demons who have a hell of a football team. Quite well, frankly. I tell you what, I, I've seen them about two or three times, and they got, I think, two of the best quarterbacks, uh, Pulowski and uh, Barnes. And Barnes last week had a great game, so uh, the tickets still available. It's a great team to see. Encourage the fans of Chicago get out and support the enforcers. And go back to throw. He's got a oh! pass intended for Aaron Bailey. They're picking on Corey Sawyer. And Sawyer came up big on that one, but that was not a bad throw. No, it was a good throw. By McDougal. That was a good throw. Unfortunately for Memphis, the safety got over there and played it right. Chicago does not need to consider a field goal here. Chicago down by five. With five minutes to go in the ball game. Ball on the 29-yard line of the Memphis Maniacs. We are live in the Liberty Bowl. With Chicago down by five. Kevin McDougal, the quarterback. McDougal looking deep on the middle. Oh. Had a man, Leverson, for a moment, but it was Rico Clark who reached in at the last moment to break up the pass play. Good non call back there. Leverson, a three year starter at Minnesota. The intended receiver for that man, Kevin McDougal, who's making only his second start for Chicago this year. Oh, there's four and about 20 seconds left, JR, but I think this is this is the big play right here. Here's play. Third down. Ten to go for Chicago. Is that option? Jackson Avery trying to get outside but ran out of bounds by Paris Lennon. 
And now is decision time for Coach Ron Meyer. I don't think there is any decision. You go for it. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I'm just wondering if they just they just thought, well, let's what it was, third and eight or nine or ten. Let's get half of it, and we'll pick it up on fourth down. Interesting stat here. Chicago on fourth downs for the season. Five of seven. Well, I wonder, how, I wonder how much that is in for. You know what I mean? He's, he's tough. Will John Avery get the football here? That's the question. Kevin McDougal on a fourth down play. Five yards to go. This could be the ball game for Chicago. There's motion. Pass complete. Lee. And a first down to Aaron Bailey. McDougal, cool, calm, and collected. John Williams on the tackle. Ball down the 16 yard line of Memphis and Chicago with less than three and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Chicago down in the red zone with the ball on the 16. You know, I don't want to jinx anybody, but you know, we haven't talked about the offensive line of the enforcers. I mean, they've been doing a fairly good job. Turner, Anderson, Murphy, LaBelle, and Ramirez. Avery, the long running back. Well, he's taking in motion, the, the tight end. Aaron Bailey catching the ball inside the 10-yard line, down to the seven. John Williams again on the tackle. 2.45 to go in this football game on a beautiful night in Memphis. Chicago looking to win their first ball game this year on the road. You know, that interception by Drunkenfeller, I, 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 you know, that's going to, well, obviously be costly because if they just would have settled for a field goal there, they'd have a by eight, right? Exactly. Now it's going to be third, second down. Second down and one. LaShawn Johnson. Look out, look out, he's in there. Touchdown, Chicago. LaShawn Johnson. Running on the right side. One of whose personnel? Oh, Jumbo. LaShawn Johnson with a touchdown, and Chicago now leading 23 to 22. Let's go, let's go. Now, I'm going to go try for the try here, and it'll, it'll probably take it down to the two-minute mark. Take your old time, Chicago. Chicago will try the extra point from the two-yard line, but it will be after the two-minute warning. So Kevin McDougal, after the two-minute warning, will have the opportunity for the uh, point after touchdown here. Chicago leading by one with two minutes to go in the ball game. Is that LaShawn's fourth touchdown? Yeah, I want to run the ball. Yeah, that's, that's the second one today. Let's run it. Let's run it. Jumbo left 17. 17. They yeah. got the big backfield. Chicago's got the big backfield yep. in LaShawn Johnson and Charles Wiley. Wiley number Let's 34 go. with fullback. 6'1, 225 out of Georgia Jumbo Tech. 17 first time. Ready? Yep. What well, Chicago wins here tonight. They're taking it out on the Western Conference and they got San Francisco coming in next week. Exactly. Johnson up the middle. Near the goal line, ball around. comes loose. Trey Thomas made the tackle. The point after touchdown is no good, but Chicago will lead by one. And that's all they need to win the game, right? Exactly. Yep. Memphis was favored by six coming into this ball game. I won 29 and 24 at the corners all the way. Right. All right. Let's go. Certainly want to welcome all the fans that are watching Las Vegas and Orlando. I'm Jim Ross, alongside the legendary Dick Buckus. We are in Memphis, Tennessee. We win the game. Get the ball out, and we win the game. Get the ball. One, two, three, four. Memphis is, has, uh, is trading by one. Chicago just scored on a LaShawn Johnson run, as you will see here. Right here. Look at it. Spinning, spinning, and turning, and came in there. What's he doing? Oh, no. 
I didn't see that. <laughs> that's, anyway. not a, that's not a Dick yeah. Buckus uh, move there. No. Uh, Sean Johnson scoring the touchdown. Chicago looking to win their first game on the road this season, leading by one. Chicago still has an opportunity. An outside chance, but an opportunity to still compete in the playoffs. Oh, but mind, I don't snake bite. <laughs> Chicago with the things. I mean, they, they are, if they win this, they're in the playoffs, okay? Let me take the heat. All right, that's a number 51, folks. Whatever he says, I'm for. All right. Kevin Cobb and Damon Dotson back deep to receive. Andy Crossland's kickoff. Two minutes to go in the ball game. Memphis will get the ball back, trailing by one. Kick at the, taken at the six-yard line. Memphis uh, has had two turnovers tonight in the end zone. And uh, this team, Memphis, has yet to win at home. Here was a costly turnover in the red zone, Dick. Yeah, well, Cooper fumbled there on a run, and then Drunken Miller here. I, I don't know. I guess he thought he, yeah. he was going to just loft it in there, but it was intercepted, and that, that could have well cost them the game here. Drunken Miller, 22 of 33 passes tonight, 370 yards. Big Jim Druckenmiller has lost both the starting running backs tonight. Druckenmiller in a shotgun, looking to throw. The big man's going to run. And Druckenmiller up to the 30-yard line, tackled by Larry Fitzpatrick. 66. Deep base right, 66. Fitzpatrick chasing Druckenmiller down from behind. Nicholas Ball, second down, four. Druckenmiller, the quick out. Finds Bo Morgan, number 32. Morgan, the though 5-9 running back, started this game as a backup wide receiver. Remember, fans, he played wishbone quarterback at Air Force as little number 32. Well, here we go with the Chicago, you know, prevent defense. So Drunken Miller's just going to pepper it down, but... Mike's 50, Mike's 50! Minute 30 to go in this football game. Memphis ball, first and 10. Memphis down by one. Drunken Miller back to throw, looking deep. Too deep. And pass intended for Daryl Hobbs. Jason Gray on the coverage. And don't be afraid to take your check down. All right, Dolphin left. XFL's leading rusher, Rashawn Salam. With a shoulder injury in the first half. He has backed up Rafael Cooper, tore his knee up. He's out for the season. That's why number 32, Bo Morgan, has moved over from backed up right receiver to running back. Memphis with one timeout remaining. Drucken Miller's got some room. Up to the 40 yard line is Drucken Miller, Jamie Baisley on the tackle. But the clock is right, running. Right, right, right. Ooh, somebody's out. Clock stops with an injury. A Chicago enforcer down on the field. Can't get the number. That's a Chicago. I think it's 96. Well, if it's 96, it's Sterling Palmer who just uh, just came to Chicago. So Memphis can't really read if it's a shoulder or what. Dick third down play, Dick Buckus, third down and four for Memphis, trailing by one, one ten to go in the ball game. You know, people losing the Salam and everything else. I, you know, I think Chicago's well aware. Folks, our fans. Uh, We'll be rejoining the Orlando Las Vegas game, taking back down to Florida. Yeah, I think it's just a shoulder. A little just, stinger looks like. Yeah. Just the uh, shoulder. Shoulder injury I mean, and the farmer off the field with a huge third down here for stop, stop, the Memphis stop, Maniacs. Back it up. One ten to go in the football game. Back it up. Third and four. Yeah, I got you. That bend but don't break Chicago defense be tested here. Drucken Miller has a lot of time to throw behind that big offensive line. Orlando remaining undefeated, beating Las Vegas tonight, 27-15. All right. Ball on the 40-yard line in Memphis. Third down and four. 
Chicago rushing four. Druckenmiller. Oh, what was he thinking? Going to Daryl Hobbs, and a, not a great throw by Druckenmiller, who was being pressured, and now a fourth down play. So the football game for Memphis, Dick Buckus, Here we go. Here we go. rides on this fourth down play, fourth and four for the Maniacs. The ball is on their own 40-yard line. I tell you, both of these teams. <laughs> Mike 46. The fourth down, not too, uh, not too swift on fourth down. Brooklyn Miller in the shotgun. Has time. Completes the pass to the 50-yard line. That's his boy, Jordan. Charles Jordan with another reception. Jordan's got nine balls tonight. For 200 and our 10 catches, 241 yards for number 88. Hawk running, first down. Pass complete to Bo Morgan out in the flat. Three right. Three right. Oh, here we go with no. the hurry up. Right, Let's go. It's got to be a sense of urgency for Memphis. Get up, get up. Chicago in the prevent defense. Brooklyn Miller back to throw. Brooklyn Miller avoids the rush. Brooklyn Miller's got some room down the sideline. Six lowered his head, and Drucker Miller makes something happen, but only 26 seconds to go in the ball game. Well, I think he's laying it on the line because of that interception he threw. You know, I, I think he's you know going to take the loss personally, so now he's really going after it. First and ten, Memphis Maniacs the ball on the Chicago 26 yard line. Memphis trailing by one. Don't get him, Hoff. Brooklyn Miller in the shotgun. Looking to throw. Looking for the end zone. Looking for the end zone. Oh. A touchdown. A touchdown to Daryl Hobbs. Daryl Hobbs beat Corey Ivey. Unbelievable. Ivey intercepted the pass earlier. Yeah. That looked like it won the game for Chicago. And the thing about it, JR, it looked like he had good position, but. Oh, man. A perfectly thrown ball by Jim Brooklyn Miller. Drucken Miller, 26 of 39, 414 yards. Memphis leading by five. And uh, the extra point attempt with 20 seconds to go in the ball game. It'd be nice to have a little insurance. Drucken Miller with a fade. Oh, complete. Again, the number 80, Daryl Hobbs. Brooklyn Miller ripped hard on that Come drive. Here. Here. Unbelievable. And who would have thunk it? Chicago had a one-point lead ball game here. Jim Ross and Dick Buckus back in, in Memphis. The Maniacs up 29, 23, 20 seconds to go in the ball game. Stephen, hey, how about this total yardage by Memphis, JR? 513 yards. And Brooklyn Miller has 414 through the air. Jeff Hall to kick off. Well, for Memphis, a low line drive kick bouncing, taken by a big offensive lineman. Well, Daryl Hobbs, you guys haven't won a home game all year long. This one huge to pull you to three and three. You know, we just. We just tried to come out, concentrate on little things, and get Kippy's first home victory, and get ourselves our first home victory, and try to keep the fans in, involved in what we're doing. Let them know we're still trying to fight. How important all the fans to you? Great crowd here tonight. We love it. Couldn't have done it without them. We need all the fan support we can get, because we've been making a push. You know, we at the halfway point. We've got to make a push right now. So that's what we're trying to do. We need all the fan support. There we go, this special, but nothing like Soldier Field. And, uh, McDougal in the in the shotgun. They're gonna go deep. McDougal throws down the middle. Oh, he had a man. Junior Lord almost caught it at the 30-yard line. Trey Thomas, the big uh, safety out of Texas, made a play, but not a bad throw by Kevin McDougal. Nah, just a, I think it was a little. It's a wobbly pass, but it just. You see how it curved a little bit? It was a little bit behind him, but just as well. He was well covered there. Let's go. Same thing. Oh, boy. Ten seconds to go in the ball game. 
it looked like Chicago had the, the victory in hand. Leading by one late, late in the fourth quarter. Over 20,000 fans here in Memphis chanting for the defense. Can McDougal get out of bounds if he wants to have one more play? He's McDougal get out. out of bounds at the at the 50 with three seconds to go. Marvin Thomas chasing Kevin McDougal out of bounds, Dick. Well, isn't this weird, man? Uh, you know, Memphis had a tough time, lost a couple close games, uh, hasn't haven't won at home. Now they start the victory here. Chicago had it won, but just great drive. I think it was Drunken Miller. I mean, you know, he was so upset about that interception that virtually cost him the game and then with a minute or less than two minutes drove down to a nice pass and uh, they're going to come out on top it looks like if something doesn't happen we right here with one play so one more shot Ron Meyer would love as you heard a pass interference we don't need any motion let's go together All right. you know I don't think Chicago's issues are are that much offensive. I, I like McDougal. I think he's gonna he's gonna end up being a, a hell of a quarterback for Chicago. You got John Avery. They got LaShawn Johnson. Offense doesn't seem to be the issue with Chicago. Well, you know, surprisingly enough, I, you know, they're always complaining that everybody in this league is that they don't have enough quality linemen. But I think McDougal had some good protection tonight against a pretty good defensive line and a guy named Shantae Carver. Exactly. So they've done a good job. And again, it's, it goes to the defense. You know. Uh, this bend and bend but don't break business. I don't know. Three seconds to go in the ball game. Kevin McDougal has one more chance. Flag down. Chicago may have been off sides. McDougal throwing the ball deep. It's batted up. And pass incomplete. There's no time on the clock. But there's a penalty flag down. I think it might have been Chicago off sides. I think the motion man. Fred Coleman may have been in the neutral zone. I think so. I think you're right. He just got in there a little bit too much. The formation on the offense. That penalty is automatically declined. That's the ball game. Wow. That's the end, huh? So Chicago cannot win on the road. And the Maniacs come back late in the fourth quarter. For a hard-fought 29-23 to 23 victory over the Chicago well, I think it was a gutsy, uh, gutsy two minutes with uh, Jim Drunkenmiller coming back. Well, folks, next Saturday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, it's the Birmingham Bolts at the Las Vegas Outlaws. And tomorrow at noon uh, Eastern, 7 o'clock in Chicago, the Miami Heat take on the New York Knicks, the NBA on NBC. And don't forget tonight, stay tuned for the game for Chicago's NBC 5 News at 10. And then it's Saturday Night Live starring Conan O'Brien with musical guest Don Henley. Dick, it has been a pleasure sitting alongside you tonight here in the booth. Well, good, buddy. I enjoyed working with you, and I uh, hope I didn't throw you off too much. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It's great to be with the legendary number 51. Don't give up on the Chicago team. Tonight, Memphis wins 29-23 to for Dick Buckus. I'm Jim Ross saying good night, everybody. But Fox, green 80. huge blocker for so long. Say blue, blue 80. Blue 80. <laughs> so long, right at the guts, and Hubert Thompson makes the tackle, assisted by Fix. Good job. Good help me out. Let's go, JR. I wonder, I wonder how much information. Who gave the most information? Isaac Let's Davis about the enforcers count. or Wheelham with the Memphis. You know, in all due respect to the Three offensive right. lineman, I got a Stop feeling it might be the quarterback. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Mike's 53. Third down seven for the Maniacs. Mike's First drive for the Mike's football Mike's game here in the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. Set. Motion by the Maniacs. Struck him on the back to throw. There's that short pass. Right. Pass is complete to Keith Crawford. And Crawford tackled by Aaron Humphreys and Kerry Cooks. Humphreys out of Texas. Kerry Cooks out of Iowa. Crawford, a big receiver, the biggest receiver on Memphis, 6'2, 195. That's 56, 989. Check flat. I'm one. Ready? Yeah. Drucker Miller, six feet. Mike's four, 50. Mike's 50. 236. Strong arm, as Dick Buckus alluded to earlier, and there's our first stoppage in play. 
And the time out. Chicago. Time out, uh, Chicago. So the enforcers call the first time out. And we'll be back momentarily in the Liberty Bowl. I know, but he wasn't really open to We are back live in Memphis here at NBC. Jim Ross and Dick Buckus with you here in the Liberty Bowl. Just getting underway here, and something's got to give here, Dick. Chicago has not won in a row. Memphis has not won at home. Well, you know, those uh, games on the road for Chicago is tough. They were away from home for three weeks in a row. Druckenmiller looking to throw deep. Got a man. Look at Completion inside the 10 yard line. Oh, it just seems like it was a matter of time. You're going to let the big one fly. Charles Jordan with a big gain from the big arm of Jim Druckenmiller. Jason Brown on the coverage. Ray 5-9. Did not match up well on that exchange. Big arm by Druckenmiller. Nice play. You know what they did? You see, they, they ran it off that I formation. Play action. And Jordan, who's probably the fastest guy in the field, comes down with the catch. First and goal for Memphis, 38-yard line. Here comes Salon. Salon right up the middle. And hammered by the middle linebacker, Aaron Humphreys, the former Texas Longhorn, makes the stop for Chicago. He doesn't wear number 51, but he is a tough competitor at middle linebacker. Well, they got a couple good linebackers over there. 53, uh, Baisley, and, and Humphrey is really coming on. Memphis has had problems in the red zone this season. Let's see if Brook and Miller can lead the Maniacs into the promised land with a second down and goal inside the five. Rashawn Salon. Nothing fancy. Salon down near the goal line. No signal. He's not down enough. Third down and, and goal, it looks like. Aaron Humphrey's on a, again on the tackle. There's Ron Meyer. Boy, a big offensive line in Memphis. Averaging well over 300 pounds go, per man. Let's go. Let's go. I, per, or per, let's go. I left. Jim Wright. I saw Wright. I'm working. That play right behind a newly acquired Ike Davis, a 320-pounder, number 69. 6'2", 6'2". Out of Arkansas. Acquired a trade from Chicago this week. Third down play. Salam. Looking for the end zone and finds it. Yep. Right behind Ike Davis and Harry Boatswain. Memphis with a drive of 75 yards in four and a half minutes. You know, they they, they have their trouble scoring in, in the fourth period, in the second half, really. But they get this jump. Uh, it's going to be tough for Chicago, so... And here's the all-important point. Now, I say all-important in, in Jess. But this one point sometimes comes in handy. No extra points are kicked in the XFL, as our fans know. Ball snap from the two-yard line. Drucker Miller, play action. And pass is broken up by Jamie Baisley, number 53. So Memphis scores first. Only one yard run by Rashawn Salam, capping a 75 yard drive. And folks, with a timeout, the U.S. Army presents victories in life. Tonight, we look at Las Vegas Outlaws running back Rod Smart, who grew up in the projects and changed his life through education in football. Rod Smart, a great example of the U.S. Army's victories in life. 50 or 53, which is strong side. That must be a key for his lineman to let maybe Rashawn know that. Uh, you know, he's going to bust it the opposite way of maybe 50. See, right here, he yells 50, 50. Second down and eight. Maniacs ball on their own 11-yard line. Play action. Drunken Miller looking to throw. The short pass is broken up by Jamie Baisley, number 53. I think somebody got their hand on that. I don't think uh, they have a number one draft choice throwing a pass end over end. Otherwise, we'd be in that box. Well, speak for yourself. You played the game. I've only watched it. Third down and eight for Jim Druckenmiller. 33-10-53. Memphis it's not bad. Third down converts here. Can they succeed? Pressure. On, and John goes Druckenmiller. Larry Fitzpatrick, number 99, with a sack. 
Fitzpatrick out of Illinois State along with Jason Chork, number 97. A couple of very active defensive ends for Chicago, Dick. Yeah, they do, and even uh, uh, Thompson in the middle, number 91, is having a pretty good year after the first couple of games. Big kid from Michigan State is coming out now, but, I mean, he uh, he, he really hustles. He's a big, strong guy, and guy, kind of guy you want in the middle when you're playing the three-man defensive line. Jeff Hall from Tennessee will kick for Memphis. It's got to go 25 yards, and it does. Chicago feeling the ball, turning the corner. And Luke Leverson, the return man, Jackie Kellogg makes the tackle for Memphis. Leverson, a wide receiver out of Minnesota, returned the kick. So Chicago's got great field position here, Dick Buck. This uh, first and 10, the ball on the 25-yard line. Let's go. Well, I, I would say this is great, you know, 30-yard line. But after the first series, Chicago scores in three plays. I don't, you know, they can, they're starting to move the ball. Kevin McDougal McDougal with John Avery behind him, the lone running back. Three wide receivers to the white right for the Chicago Enforcers, who lead by one. There's Avery, a little stutter step. And Avery, tackled by Richard Hogan's number 54, along with DJ Cooper, number 73. Cooper, a 290-pounder out of Arkansas. Hogan's played here in Memphis. Oh, right here, right here. See, that time the enforcers had three receivers wide to one side, which drags a lot of your defensive backs over. I think their idea is if they can pop it through the line of scrimmage, the DBs are gone, and John uh, Avery's got a free free reign to go wherever he wants, but he's got to get through the line first. Avery gained three, brings up second down, seven for Chicago, showing motion. I think that's going to be a free play. There's no flag. Leverson, the intended receiver. Coverage on a play by Cornell Menifee. Right there, right there. Did it look like you, like the, the right defensive end jumped? Right, right it looked like the uh, defensive end was in the zone before the ball was snapped. But looked like it. Apparently not the case. No laundry on the field. Can't complain about that too much. Third down and seven for Chicago. The ball is at the uh, Memphis 21-yard line. And Chicago has struggled this season. On third down conversions, worst in the XFL thus far. Leverson in motion. McDougal throwing the ball. Did he catch that? And oh, there's oh. those ruling that it, the man is out of bounds. John Williams on the coverage. Wow, you know they. Aaron Bailey, the intended receiver, Dick. And yeah, they they weren't going just for the first down. They were going for the whole ball of wax. Here's another look. And apparently, a Bailey was out coverage. of bounds. Yeah. Only got to get one foot in bounds. That's right, but I think his uh, his right foot just crossed over and stepped out. Let's see for sure. Well, well Andy Cross is going to attempt a field goal here. Cross and uh, let me attempted five field goals. He's three of five this season. And the kick is up. It's long enough, and it is good. All right. And Chicago now increases their lead to 10 to 6 on Crossland's field goal. So Chicago looking for a must win here tonight. Lead by four. John Avery showed that he can not only run the ball, but can block it. I, yeah, I couldn't believe it. I saw that little 20 go in there and throw a little shoulder at somebody. Andy Cross on the field goal moments ago, increasing Memphis lead, or Chicago's lead 10-6 over Memphis. Cross them set to kick off here. Raphael Cooper and Rico Clark are deep to receive for the Memphis Maniacs here in the Liberty Bowl. Nice high kick by Crosston. Taking it at the two-yard line. And the ball is returned up here. The enforcers have booked the friendly confines of Soldier Field to venture to the Liberty Bowl, where tonight the Chicago Enforcers beat the Memphis Maniacs in a must-win for both teams here in the XFL. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Ross, and thank you very much for being with us here on NBC here in the Liberty Bowl. And it is certainly a pleasure to, to welcome to the broadcast booth 
the greatest middle linebacker to ever play pro football for my money, Dick Buckus, and Dick, certainly a must-win situation for both these teams here tonight. Well, you're right, uh, J.R. Memphis at 2-3, and three, they're only one game out, and Chicago, even though they've got four losses, they're only, if they can win tonight, they'll be right back into it. Ladies and gentlemen, certainly our standings here in the XFL uh, bear what we're saying as far as a must-win situation here. In, in the Eastern Division, Chicago at 1-4, and four, only uh, one game behind Birmingham, fighting for one of two places in the East in the playoffs, and looking in the West, as far as Memphis is concerned, they're looking for their first home victory here tonight, but Memphis is only one game behind three teams in the West. Now, looking at the action this weekend, certainly down in Orlando, huge game with Las Vegas visiting the undefeated Rage, uh, and tomorrow, New York travels to San Francisco, and the extreme will go to Alabama to take on the Birmingham Bolts. And Dick, this ball game tonight with a new quarterback for Chicago, a kid out of Notre Dame, the XFFL player of the of the week last week as Chicago makes their way onto the field. This game for Chicago offensively really rests on the arm and leg of Kevin McDougal. Well, you're, you're right, Jr. Last week he was 17 for 22 passes for 169 yards. What was really impressing, he had 280 yard scoring drives and if they uh, I have any chance tonight they've got to do that tonight and uh, Mc McDougal and the XFL player of the week uh, last week for his efforts and uh, the, another man that we're going to be looking at a lot tonight is number 20 John Avery John Avery is the starting running back for Chicago one of the most exciting players in the XFL well the second leading uh, rusher in the league behind uh, Salam but he's he's dangerous anytime he gets the ball in and talking to Coach Meyer, they're going to try to get him the ball either on short passes and, of course, the runs. He's a very exciting player and, and a tough little guy. Dick, the teams uh, this week, Memphis and Chicago, orchestrated a trade. Chicago received Craig Wheelahan, a quarterback, and Memphis starting tonight for them will be Ike Davis, number 69, in the offensive line. Well, it's kind of unusual. You trade a quarterback for a lineman, but I think because Isaac Davis is such a big guy, and the offensive line of the Maniacs are all big. Huge. And what they do is open up some nice holes for Salam. So uh, I think that was what the reason of the trade. Ike Davis will be starting tonight, number 69, a 320-pounder out of Arkansas. And he'll be blocking for a man that is no stranger to our fans in Chicago. He wears number 31 from Memphis, former Heisman Trophy winner from Colorado, and number one draft pick of the Bears, Rashawn Salam. Right. He's, uh, he's had a heck of a year so far. You know, he... He's the number one draft choice. He had some knee problems. It looks like he's healed that uh, knee problem, and he's he's running like crazy because he is the number one rusher. And uh, quarterbacking Memphis tonight, a big, strong young man from Virginia Tech, Jim Druckenmiller, 6'5", about 240 pounds. I don't want to be a broken record, but, you know, another number one draft choice who can throw the ball 70 yards. Now, what we got to see is if he can throw the intermediate passes for completion. Tough kid, too. Memphis uh, about to take the field here momentarily, ladies and gentlemen, here in the Liberty Bowl. And again, because of the short season, uh, it is a, a situation where both these teams tell the opportunity to get in the playoffs. Here comes the Maniacs now. Just under 20,000 fans expected here tonight on a beautiful night in Memphis. Great night for football, Dick. Well, uh, they can't uh, complain about the weather tonight. It's a nice night. And uh, it's too bad, but uh, Memphis hasn't won at home, so this is going to be a big game for them. Absolutely. The starting quarterback tonight again for Chicago is Kevin McDougal out of Notre Dame. He's standing by with our own Jonathan Coachman. Well, Kevin McDougal, last week you got thrown into the fire. Huge win in your first start, but this is your first big road test. Any butterfly? Uh, not really. You know, I, just, I have a lot of good teammates here. Uh, they have a lot of talent, so I'm just going to get the ball to the receivers and let them do their thing. Now, there's a guy on the other sideline, Shante Carver. He's already put out two quarterbacks this year in only five weeks. What do you think about facing him tonight? Oh, it's going to be tough. Uh, I have all the confidence in my offensive line, and those guys have been playing good all year, so hopefully they can keep him off me. That's always the goal, no doubt about it. Shante Carver will be wearing number 78 for Memphis tonight. Uh, he is an awesome player, and as Coach said, two quarterbacks have gone down at the hands of Shante Carver already this season. Well, Shante has been a real nemesis for all the quarterbacks in this league. And the interesting thing is the game last week, and we'll see it here, uh, Clement of Vegas, uh, he did not return after that hit. But this one here, this was the big hit of the night. 
Incidentally, that was a touchdown pass, and I think I'm correct in saying that Jeff Brom is going to be able to play tonight uh, down there in Orlando. Yeah, you know, uh, Clement is also supposed to start down there tonight. Clement's shoulder separated by Shante Carver. The knockout hit by Carver on Brom, and as Dick said, uh, both Carver and Clement will, are scheduled to start tonight uh, in the big ball game down in Orlando. Uh, Shante Carver is now standing by, we understand, with Jonathan Coachman. Well, Shante, you've been arguably the premier defensive player in the league so far. You've knocked out two quarterbacks already. What are your plans for the youngster McDougal tonight? Just going to go out there and play football. You know, that's what I've been doing all year. Uh, defensively, we try to get after him up front. You know, I'm just taking it the same. I'm going out there for a battle. It's war, and let's play some football. With McDougal so young, are you going to try to intimidate him verbally early on? That's not part of my game. I just go out there and play. You know, it's no big deal. He's not a quarterback. We gotta get pressure on them, and you know, it's football. Shante Carver, a former number one draft pick, be wearing number 78 tonight. And uh, Dick, the uh, coin toss has been eliminated here in the XFL. It's uh, a version of a, of a human coin toss. That's it. We're gonna have a scramble here. Coach is going to go down and uh, preside over the scramble for the football here. Neither team has had a great deal of success in the scramble this year. Back down to coach. All right, now it's time for the scramble for the ball. So Memphis, get on your feet. For Chicago, number 21, Troy Saunders. And for Memphis, number 20, Raphael Cooper. Sir, it's all yours. Gentlemen, put your helmets on, please. Right where you're at. Down on the three-point. I'll say ready and the whistle. Just one arm's length for me, please. Ready? And there is the scramble. And Memphis, Rafael Cooper, winning the scramble for Memphis. And that's going to give Memphis the opportunity to kick, receive, defend the goal of their choice, or defer, Dick. You know what I'm going to think of? I, I, I've got an idea about that scramble. Let's make it worth more than just the opening kickoff. What do you think of more money? Not, no, I'm going to run this by you. What if what if the winner of the scramble gets the ball like on the 50 yard line? That's not bad. Now we'll see them guys go after it. Now you're playing cards. <laughs> Gibby Brown certainly has paid his dues in professional football. Offensive coordinator with the uh, Miami Dolphins where he coached John Avery. He'll be playing for Chicago tonight. Of course, Chicago's coach is the venerable veteran Ron Meyer, who uh, Certainly well, gained fame and coaching at SMU with had Eric Dickerson and Craig James there. Yep. Coach from in Indianapolis and uh, New England as well. Wow, that's the most animated I've seen uh, Russ in a while. Ron Meyer. Ron, I mean. Certainly. Uh, Russ Meyer. I think he was a director of some sort of... Never yeah, mind. Could have been. <laughs> Andy Cross is going to kick off for Chicago. Ron Meyer. Raphael Cooper is back deep to receive. Ron Meyer. Pretty simple instructions. All right, now you don't have to keep repeating it. All right, I made a mistake. No, he, he just, he's going to... Uh, he just said hit him in the mouth. That's pretty straightforward. Even an old Oklahoman like me can understand that. <laughs> Well, this ought to be an interesting game, really. Uh, you got the two leading rushers. It's going to be something. Memphis will get the football first. It'll be Andy Crossland kicking off for Chicago. Crossland out of Miami, Florida. And the ball taken at the six-yard line and returned to the 25-yard line. Raphael Cooper returning the ball to the 25. Chicago's ball, first and ten. At the 25-yard line. Let's go, fella. Here we go now. Bam. So Jim Druck in middle of the quarterback behind a huge offensive line. Druck and Miller has uh, Rashawn Salon, number 31, working behind him. 1050. Set blue 80. Blue 80. And here comes Salon, number 31, behind that big offensive line. Bouncing room, first down for Memphis, running right up the guts 
That's their play. I formation. He has that lead blocker. And with a big offensive line, I mean, as a linebacker, it's tough to see Salam. Because these guys are so big in front of him. And he's good at picking a hole, weaving in. But also on defense, we can't have the enforcers missing tackles or arm Mike's tackling. Mike's 50, him. Mike's 50. Patrick and Baisley made the last tackle. Six, First and 10, Chicago are Memphis. Green, 80, 100. Drucker got him back to throw. We got time. Pass intended for number 84, the big tight end, Mark Thomas, out of North Carolina State. Get your head around, get your head around. See, there's that intermediate pass I was talking about. Uh, Mark Thomas, he, he was open. He just Jim threw it behind him. Roosevelt Potts, the pullback for uh, Memphis in most formations. Not in this one. We are back live in the uh, Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. That's a look at Rashawn Salam. Five carries for 21 yards in that first drive and the touchdown. And it's going to be Jeff Hall kicking off deep to receive for Chicago is Corey Ivey, number 24, starting DB out of Oklahoma. Ivey feels the ball at the four-yard line. Up to the 23, where he's brought down. And we'll take another look at the touchdown. You see right here, JR, see the right tackle? There's no one across from him. And that's what we call the bubble side. And plus you got Roosevelt Potts, the 250-pound fullback leading your way. Big, big offensive line. Right behind uh, the newly acquired Ike Davis, 320. And Harry Boatswain, that fullback, you kind to him. He was, he's 270. And Kevin McDougal, number 15, starting at quarterback tonight for Chicago. John Avery. Play pick to Avery. McDougal looking to throw. Looking to go deep. First play. Complete. Oh, hey. Big play, but to Junior Lord, Rico Clark on the on the coverage, but Junior Lord. What the, what the heck is going on? His longest pass last week was 23 yards. Pretty good pass protection, throws it up. Unbelievable. Great play by Junior Lord, 6'1", 197, huh. out of Guilford College. And McDougal showing us that he does have a great arm. 54, boy! McDougal, a former starter at Notre Dame. Black 22. At his first start last Black week. 22. Avery, the eye back. And another pass complete. Again, the quick out to Junior Lord. Corey Sawyer out of Florida State on the coverage. So, well, you know, Memphis's defense got to be thinking let's put up you know almost eight guys in what they call you know the famous box to stop the run with Avery but here here's the enforcers open up with a long pass then a short out let's go, let's go. now we see what the heck they're gonna do second down five for Chicago ball at the uh, 30 yard line of Memphis quick pitch to Avery Avery doesn't need to go through Avery at the 10 John Avery at the five. John Avery touchdown. There's Chicago. Something. <laughs> John Avery into the end zone. John Avery is not quick. He is sudden. Well, that's John's uh, what number three? His third uh, rushing touchdown. I tell you what, that guy's that guy's something. I don't know. He's, he's like a jitterbug. They spread out the defense, you know, and just gave him a toss. And uh, offensive line guys did a pretty good job. John Avery didn't need much room. It'll take a little quick toss. See what I mean? It, nice little hole there, but here's here's the skill, man. Great cutback. A knowing when to cut back. All right. Well. John, John Avery responds, and now the extra point attempt. Chicago stamping the ball at the two-yard line. Willie Tate in motion. McDougal back to throw. Got, Got a man. Ah. Well, that all-important extra point. See what I mean? Extra point is so Chicago now with the successful extra point conversion has uh, gained the lead here on John Avery's 30-yard touchdown run. We'll be right back with Chicago leading by one. We are back live in Memphis where Chicago has just regained the lead. 7-6 to six, or gained the lead, I should say. Chicago leading uh, the Maniacs here, Memphis 7-6. to six. 
Andy Cross, the number four, about to kick off. Raphael Cooper, number 20, deep to receive, along with uh, number 27, Rico, or Kevin Cobb, number 25. Balls in the end zone's got to be returned. Out. Cooper trying to turn the corner. A whole yeah. lot of East and West running for Raphael Cooper. Guys, uh, react to adversity. Three plays, not too bad. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, but we've got a long ways to go. Uh, you know, that's a great team over there. So they score pretty quick. So we just got to keep answering them every time they score. A calm, collected young man, a, a golden domer, Dick. Yep. Uh, pretty classy guy. A uh, good character guy. Uh, you know what you really want in a leader as a quarterback. Big backfield for Memphis is in. Fox, 270 pound fullback. Lined up in front of Rashawn Salon, number 31. Jim Druckenmiller, the quarterback. First and 10, Memphis. Ball at the nine yard line. Salon. Right at the guts. Being introduced up to number 50 again, Aaron Humphreys. It's all over. You know, when you, when you listen to. Uh, Duncan Miller, when he gets to the uh, line of scrimmage, you know, he'll call out either 